Guys, after three straight months of every week we get up here and we say there's nothing happening in the NBA, we're going to find stuff to talk about, but we're really going to be forcing it, something finally happened. And it wasn't just something. One of the biggest trades in NBA history, with no hyperbole, went down. Yeah. Damian Lillard is a buck. How do y'all feel? I ain't going to lie. This is one of the... I want to say this is one of the like most feel good trades of all time because everybody's <laughs> been on their knees praying to the good God that that <laughs> Damian Lillard gets traded and moved for like the last maybe three, four, four years. Matt has been Facts. screaming this, bro. And it finally happened and it happened in the most opportune, best possible place for him in Milwaukee. Facts. Facts. This has the opportunity to be one of like the five biggest legacy defining trades that like mm. the league has ever seen with Giannis on one side and Dame for both of them to go into like top, you know, top 25 status, right? Giannis is probably already there, but they're both yeah. going to they're both going to level up at least two tiers if they get a ring. I didn't even think about I didn't even think about that angle yet. It's, again, this is we're recording this like it's the obviously the night of the trade happening earlier today, so I haven't even gotten to process that side of things yet. So I'm glad we're going to talk about that and get into what it means for the legacies, like you said, what it means for the Bucks title hopes this year, the Blazers rebuild, the Suns got in on this trade and somehow made moves that we'll see what you guys feel about it. There's, there's so many angles to attack this thing from. You got to let these folks know. Starting? You got to let these yeah. folks know beforehand, Isaac, read off the checklist and tell them about the special <laughs> things we got going on. Please. <laughs> As always, if you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor, drop a like and subscribe. Help us grow the channel some more. If you're on audio platforms, rate us five star, leave a review, all that. And as I mentioned last episode, we're doing a PS5 giveaway. The way it's going to work is all you guys have to do is follow us on Twitter at the Deep Three Podcast. You'll see it in the description. You'll see it in the top comment. Once we get to 10K followers on Twitter, we're going to do a PS5 giveaway. We'll see how long it takes, y'all. Last episode, you guys got us like 900 followers from that. At that rate, it'll take you like, I don't know, two and a half months, get us to 10K, maybe a little sooner. We'll see. But we got a PS5 for somebody. Let's do it, man. Yeah, man. That's that's a checklist. Let's jump straight into this. Where do we start? We got to start with, with Milwaukee, obviously. They are... I mean, listen, they're championship or bust. And like... Yeah, easily. If that's like... That's it. And for them, shout out to them. Because I did not think that they had anything in their arsenal to go out and make this trade happen. I didn't think that they were going to move off of Drew Holiday, who just yesterday was like, hey, I'm trying to like retire a, a buck. Like I want to be here my entire career and then immediately get gets moved. So like that's <laughs> yeah. just, you know, that's, so for that's people just business. Who, for people who somehow don't know, today a three-team trade went down. Damian Lillard is on the Milwaukee Bucks. DeAndre Ayton and a first-round pick from 2029 from the Bucks and a bunch of moving yeah. parts went to the Trailblazers. And then the Suns got Yusuf Nurkic, who apparently they fucking love for some reason, Grayson Allen, Nazir Little, and Keon Johnson. That's the details of the trade. And yeah, like Donovan said, Milwaukee's championship or bust. I'm going to go a step further and say they're the clear favorites to win it all, I think. They are. I think this is going to... We're going to quickly see that this is probably going to be the best duo in the NBA, which again, as you see in the title of the episode, we're going to talk about the 10 best duos in the league later on in the episode. I think this will probably be one before sooner or later. And yeah, it's going to be to the point where if they don't win, I'll be highly surprised. It's not quite the level of like when the Warriors got KD and it's like they're for sure going to win, but it's fucking close. Yeah, absolutely. And for someone like it's so close because Damian Lillard, he averaged like 32 points per game last season. And yeah, I feel like a lot of people fucking forget that shit. He was phenomenal. Had his best season as a pro in the entire NBA or throughout his entire career last season, bro. And the Blazers, of course, had nothing to show for it other than the number <laughs> three overall pick, you know? So for someone like Damian Lillard, I think everybody's, of course, salivating over the team fit. You have the, the Bucks have a potential starting lineup of Dame some white dude or some good defender or some shooter. I don't know. <laughs> Chris Middleton, Giannis, and also Lopez. Like that is an insane Nasty. starting five. And no, it's, it's the best picture the perfect, bro. Picture perfect. You have yeah. like, you couldn't pair. There's oh, maybe like only one other player that you would rather have in the NBA at the point guard, point guard position to play alongside Giannis. And that's fucking maybe someone like Steph. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. This is the second best like that you right can think of. There. Exactly, yeah. bro. And um, it's crazy. The most interesting part, like we're obviously we're gonna talk plenty about what this team looks like on paper. It's just so you gotta respect the hell out of the Bucks front office. Giannis, 
every time you could this offseason, told people, I will leave if you don't do the right thing. Don't put a team around me that I can have trust in. He saw that writing on the motherfucking wall, saw Drew Holiday getting old, saw Chris Middleton getting old, saw Brick Lopez already being old, and yeah. was like, I don't know if we're going to contend in three or four years. If you don't do something about it, I'm going to go somewhere else that'll do that for me. They yeah. immediately jump on the superstar available and show that they're 100% about it and are going to build around him as long as they can. Yeah. It's, fun, it's funny, though, because, like, Dame is, like, 32 years old himself, and his <laughs> deal, like, every, Giannis is going to be, like, the youngest one in that core, and mm -hmm. they have a solid two years, maybe three, just because Dame, for the last couple of years, he's he's gotten hurt um, plenty of times. Giannis is the same way. Chris Middleton is the same way. So, like, I think that this is a very, very much win right now, this yeah, year. And yeah. then, you know, we can reevaluate, like, as each year goes by, just based on what everybody's looking like. But if they don't win, if they don't win the championship this year, right, barring some other crazy move to where some, somebody, some other team gets, like, a very stacked big three, it will be one of the biggest, you know, disappointments and failures that, that, that we can think of and it sucks You're, that we're already putting that it sucks that we're already putting that pressure but of course you are <laughs> i mean I, listen but we should be happy like, for bucks fans for a second a lot of bucks fans <laughs> over here talking about something this is the happiest i've been in years man you're talking about like, man no, we're no. this could be one of the biggest failures ever <laughs> damn yeah you have at worst you have the second best player in the world and you just got him a 32 points per game score to to make up for everything you already have a dpoy candidate at your center position and now chris middleton is your third option win the chip fam man <laughs> win, listen, win the title like, like you, going back about, a couple going back a couple steps to what isaac said this is what makes the best people in the world point blank period this permanent permeates to every aspect of life being proactive, the Bucks saw the writing on the wall. Giannis saw it a minute ago. All the old age, the Bucks, of course, they're just naturally at a disadvantage because they're in fucking Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Who the fuck wants to ever <laughs> go there? Who are they pulling? They, his tra track record Jesus. is trash, you know. And so, by them realizing that Giannis is a generational player, this is probably the best player. This could be the best player that our organization has ever touched and also one of the best players in NBA history, of course. No shock to anyone. So we need to go ahead and capitalize. <laughs> and, and We need to go ahead and capitalize every ounce of it. And so go, they go ahead, get rid of their entire future because the future doesn't matter because your future is right now, right in front of you. You know, yeah. you have a 28, 29 year old star and Giannis power to him because he was on <laughs> this dumb asshole that a lot of NBA players end up being on. Oh, <laughs> Damian Miller was on oh, like loyalty forever. I want to retire as a blah, blah, blah. And also their shit, dumbest shit in the world. And he realized that. And by him applying <laughs> yeah. this pressure, you think dumb. I, I think it's dumb for sure. It's Loyalty like, is whack. Yeah, it's, it's to a certain so, degree, yes, because a lot of one more take, real quick. But <laughs> the Milwaukee Bucks, a lot of NBA teams, they they'd be willing to be content because if the if you already win a championship, what's the point of like going ahead and trying to win more? As That's long true. as you're pulling in the racks, they don't matter. Look at the Portland Trailblazers. A lot of the teams in the NBA, their goal is not to win a championship, just championship, just to become profitable. So yeah, shout to Giannis. You mentioned uh, they traded away their future with this 29 first round, 2029 first round pick. They already have other first round picks out in order to maintain their present and win championships. I would say that this trade specifically is also secure in their future because their future just begins and ends with Giannis. He has yeah. another six years, let's say, at the high peak of his powers before he turns like 33, 34 and probably starts to fall off. If you didn't do this, he probably would have left in a, in a year or two once his contract expires. So while it is a big possible uh you no know, downside of not having your 2029 pick when he's probably retired or whatever you secured five years from now and probably still having him so it's it's a, it's a balance that this is a good trade for the now and the future because you ensure that he's not going anywhere probably for the rest of his career yeah exactly. they they had they had to do it they they did what they had to do and now it's time to win chips <laughs> like mul multiple, <laughs> Bro, let's, multiple talk about, chips. let's talk about the players or like the team on the court specifically what it looks like because Mo said it. Besides Steph Curry, there's not a single player you could think of that's a better fit with Giannis than Damian Lillard. If we look at Giannis's whole career, his playoff success, the only flaw-ish that you can look at in terms of him as a playoff performer is, given the nature that he's a big, 
when it comes to like fourth quarter crunch time, he's not going to be the guy you want, you know, running pick and rolls because he's a big man. He's be set up like it's not his skill set. He doesn't have the off dribble jumper. If he can do his run and dunk man shit for three quarters and then Damian Lillard can close it, being one of the best closers we've seen in the recent NBA history, how do you stop that? Imagine then, 2021 when Chris Middleton was dicing people up in the playoffs, but this time it's Damian Lillard, and then when he's not hitting, Chris is still there to do the same shit he was doing this before. This is a dream case. This is a dream scenario for Chris Middleton. This is the perfect role for him, bro. You couldn't make any shit up that's involved. better. Everybody involved is in the perfect scenario for their skill set. I yeah. guess what Pat content is probably gonna be the two playing defense. Yeah. Like shout out Pat. They, they have every <laughs> single archetype you'd want to build around Giannis. Like it worked in 2021 because they got Drew to have that lead guard initiator. Yeah. But listen, all respect to Drew. One thing he's gonna do is be ass in the playoffs offensively. Every so year, inconsistent, he's, bro. He's gonna oh. fall off. He's not gonna make shots. <sighs> and a lot has been made that they're gonna lose that defensive capabilities of Drew Holiday had, which was important to them. I get that. But when you add one of the three best pick and roll ball handlers of all time, I think they'll net out all right. I think they'll be fucking fine. Yeah, yeah absolutely. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be okay. Especially when your back line has Giannis and Brooke yep. Lopez, you're going to be okay, right? All mm-hmm. you, you just need one of those, you know, fr- first three guys. One of y'all has to be solid on defense. Everybody else, you can, <laughs> you can get away with. You can hide. You can do whatever you want. But have people try to come to the rim against Giannis and against Brooke. It's going to be a tough time. And so, yeah, I think that's a very, very like equal trade and net positive trade for Milwaukee to go out and get Dame and put him in that position. Because I also think that because they made this trade, it's kind of a sign to everybody else. Milwaukee's not as confident in Chris Middleton coming back and doing the things that we saw him do two years ago. Mm -hmm. Because... Ever since he had that injury, there's been a lot more pressure on Drew Holiday to be that score. Chris Middleton's been working himself back in. And I think that they kind of know, okay, everybody else is getting older. Can we expect Chris to be that same guy? And it's like, you know what? If if Chris Middleton never turns into the if he never turns into the player that he was two years ago, we'll be fine because we'll go get Damian <laughs> freaking Lillard and, it, yeah. and everything will be okay. And we'll relegate him to the third option. And that's just a luxury that basically like no other team in the league has. Something yeah. that I will say is like the immediate reaction when people try to pick holes through this trade is like, of course, you guys tacked on it. The defense. A lot of people just somehow forget that Brooke Lopez was literally in defensive player of the year arguments or he was top five. Hey, he Canada, actually, you know, second, second, insane, you know, and so that's like not a worry in mind. And also people are talking about how weak their bench and their benches. Yeah, it's like not the strongest, but they have Bobby Portis. And also, if you look back in like recent NBA history, the 2020 Lakers had like the 11th best, best, best bench unit. The Milwaukee Bucks in 2021 were like in that mid area. The Golden State Warriors in that mid area. The Milwaukee yeah. Bucks last year in that mid area. So you don't have to have like an elite bench. So you, the Denver Nuggets of this past year, they did not have a fantastic bench. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, the yeah. star power is I, above us, above all else. It's pretty much impossible these days to have a three stars and an elite bench. The only time it's happened is the Warriors, and that's why they were the fucking Warriors. Like that's exactly. incredibly hard to strike that balance. I guess what the Raptors did in 2019. That's why they won the championship too. Like that's a rare instance. So you know, beggars can't be choosers. You gotta take what you can get. But yeah, back to the point of people trying to nick nick pit holes in it, uh, nitpick holes in the trade. I saw like Skip Bayless immediately tweeted like <laughs> this trade made them a little bit worse. Bro, he's it's Celtic Bayless, Shaq. So, like, he's Celtic whatever. Shaq right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's washed. But, like, I have some numbers on that. Like people see that, and like every every NBA player says Drew Holiday is like the best defender they've ever faced. That he's like incredibly important to this team. Which, you know, you can see why they think that. One-on-one defender, he's amazing. But I think a lot of fans overrate the impact of point-of-attack defense. Yes. Especially from the point guard. It's important. It's a good tool to have. It's not everything. Like Donovan said, when you have the the best rim defense duo you could possibly imagine, it doesn't matter that much. Oh, yeah, he pulled up a Ben Pfeiffer tweet. He said the exact same thing. Exactly. That people overrate that. And I have some numbers for that. When Giannis and Brooke were on the court last year with, J- with Drew Holiday off the court... The team had a 107.7 defensive rating. 97th percentile, one of the best defensive units. That's with no Drew Holiday. When all three of them were on the court when Drew was playing, 106.9. The best point guard defender in the league made a 0.8 defensive rating difference. Not exactly. a huge deal. It matters, but people were like, who was Dame going to guard? 
nobody's winning championships and beating the Bucks by isoing Dame one on one, attacking him in the mid range, and they're not getting to the rim with Giannis and Brooke back there. Like, it does not fucking matter. That's P brain thinking right there, man. It, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> you can have basketball all. as if it's fucking black and white, bro. You know, like, yeah. and that like just goes into Drew Holiday discourse as a whole. Like throughout his career, he was viewed as underrated, and then all of a sudden in 2017, 2018, 2019, when he went ahead and did his thing, I think it was 2018 actually, 2017, when they went against the Trailblazers, everybody's like, Drew Holiday, most underrated player in the, in the world, blah, 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 all this other shit. He is fucking fantastic, and I think he's been given his flowers, but I think, like, you know what I'm saying, you took it to giving him a couple flowers to giving him a whole bouquet, and that's just like <laughs> OD now, and that's just not necessary. Like, he's nice, yeah. but we talking about over how about him like he's fucking Gary Payne yeah, or something. We ignore like the offensive flaws, like, 100%. Like, people give him a pass more than anybody's ever gotten a pass. Over the course of his playoff career with the Milwaukee Bucks, he's consistently shot 40% from the field, 38 37% from the field, and in this last recent playoff run, 40% from the field. He's inconsistent as shit. People forget that. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's not. It, listen, but it's not. It's not even inconsistency. He's consistently bad in the playoffs. Like, he, <laughs> like it's, it's a very steady stream of just missing shots. And like yeah. even even two years ago when Middleton first got hurt and they're going up against the Celtics, if if Drew played, I don't know, thirty five percent of his actual offensive potential, the Bucks probably win that series because Giannis was going crazy and they get to a game seven anyways. Like he has. He has he had great moments in 2021, but the past two years they have needed him to step up offensively. He just hasn't been able to do that. So now you are going to like at the very at the bare minimum, like whatever Drew was averaging um, in terms of just scoring, not even assists, just scoring wise. Dame can do that in his sleep. Like they're not gonna they're not gonna miss a beat, um, all, you know, all offensively, and it's gonna be it's gonna be really really fun to watch them like all mesh and do and do everything. I I can't wait. And yeah. I can't wait. And the Something, most interesting part to me is uh, yeah. Dame excels at exactly the things that this Bucks team struggled with last year. Donovan, you mentioned that Chris Middleton kind of had to fall off after that injury, and you feel like the Bucks maybe don't believe in him to come back to that level. We'll see where that happens with the year. More, it's more health. just like insurance. Yeah, in, yeah, ca- yeah, yeah, in case he doesn't, you know, they like internally they probably still still believe. Yeah, you've got to be worried you know, about it, right? Like exactly. You have we're, to have we're, gonna, we're gonna get to media day and everyone's gonna be like, yo, Chris Middleton, he's in the best shape of his life. He looks <laughs> yeah. better than he ever had. And then we're gonna come out 20 games and it's like, hey, like, is Chris Middleton okay? Like, what's yeah. what's going on? Now it doesn't <laughs> matter. Yeah, so like last year they were 13th in offense. Year before that, when Middleton was healthy, fifth. So like mm. it makes a big difference not having that. And like last year they were 13th in pick and roll ball handler points for possession. The Blazers, dumpster fire team, were second strictly because of Damian Lillard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. calling Giannis and Dame freak time. <laughs> freak time. <laughs> <That's a> crazy <laughs> nickname. Bro. But yeah. The Blazers somehow were still second in pick and roll ball hunter scoring because Dame was that good. So listen, if you had last year's Bucks who were 13th, make them the second highest pick and roll ball handler Bro. while they're still one of the best pick and roll roll man teams because they have Giannis. Like they were 29th in isolation last year. The Bucks were ninth. I mean, the Blazers were ninth. <clears throat> so like all these things that the Bucks struggle with last year, Dame immediately fixes them. So to the point where I'm like, What's their hole on offense going to be? Exactly, bro. I can't. I can't really think Nothing. of one now. Like the only thing that I can kind <laughs> of think of is like, <laughs> yeah, like sure, like, that's true. That's, that's really it. True. Yeah. yeah. That's the only. That's the only thing that's like glaring. But outside of that, like I'm betting on Giannis to go ahead and pull and be clutch because that's what he did a couple of years ago against the Phoenix Suns when he hit 17 for 18 free throws or whatever, some insane shit like that. But something about like Damien. When I watch, when I'm thinking about watching this Milwaukee Bucks team, I can't see how they're not like a top three offense at worst. Yeah, I agree. And they're already and, a top three defense. Exactly. And something I want to say is that like back to Don, what Donovan said about Chris Middleton, you don't even need Chris Middleton to be peak Chris Middleton or championship year Chris Middleton because Damian Lillard is one of the best players one of the best players in the league point blank period you seem to be 75% of what he is and, and with the <laughs> age and the constant injuries and shit like that like it's fine he's he'll be fine and I, and I and I have great respect for what they're finna do this season bro yeah they're gonna be incredible like in top three defense top three offense we're projecting assuming nothing changes assuming Brooke Lopez doesn't fall off a cliff assuming Chris Middleton can be solid Giannis is healthy I don't know how you can put any other team in their caliber right now. Obviously, the Nuggets still deserve the respect. We'll probably make it out of the West. The Suns made big moves. But I just think no team can compare on both sides of the court right now. 
we we got to talk about the Suns because we'll transition like, them or we get on the Blazers yeah. talk. I mean, the yeah. Bucks. Yeah, let's let's talk about Phoenix because to me this feels like a trade where two things happen. One, they got DeAndre Ayton out the building. Yep. They must have hated him. <laughs> they must have hated him because for them to trade Ayton, who is much better defensively than Yusuf Nurkic, and get him and get Nurkic and in the building. Exactly. Both sides <laughs> of the ball, you get Aiden. They must have hated him. And it just feels like, like, listen, there there comes a point in every fantasy football season where you just make a trade just to do it. And then you look back <laughs> and you're like, listen, I I just did this two weeks ago. Yep. Right? <laughs> I saw <laughs> listen, it. <laughs> I, I know. Right? Listen, you, you make the trade and you're like, dang, like I probably shouldn't have done that. And that's why I, when I look at the Suns, that's exactly the vibe that I get because I don't think that they got better adding Nurkic into that lineup and sending DeAndre Ayton out. Mm. Unless unless we're strictly talking about intangibles and like locker yeah. room stuff and, and all that other but, stuff. But on the on the floor, I think they got worse. I think that's complicated. Yeah. Mo, what do, what do you think, Mo? You go first for it. Might be. I think they got better, but also worse just from like <laughs> when it comes to... <laughs> they got this, like, it's just like <laughs> mid, bro. Like they got better in terms of like, yeah, locker room. You have a dude who's fully going to buy into his role and do exactly what you ask him to do but at the same time can he really do what you ask him to do because we all saw a quote talking about some oh we need a defensive presence and shit like that and you go ahead you, you, Yusuf Nurkic is the first name that pops into mind that's available I'd rather look at Dwight Howard before I look at N- Yusuf Nurkic bro so I think they they have limitations in terms of what they're looking for stylistically because Yusuf Nurkic is a player Overall, just has limitations. He's big as hell, slow footed, and all that. But for what he does, I do think he's like a good C tier uh, center in the NBA. But overall, like I'm not really feeling the fit. But while I say that, I think they overall holistically did okay, good with this trade because they got a lot of like random pieces, like Grayson Allen, who's even though a lot of people don't like him. He's a good player at the end of the day. You know me, what I'm saying? Like, he, I don't like Grayson Allen because Grayson <laughs> Allen is another yeah. one of those dudes that be falling off in the playoffs. I think for Phoenix, like they, I do want to give them credit because they did a really, really good job filling out the rest of this roster, filling out their bench when we all looked around and we we're like, they have like no cap space. Who are they going to go sign? And for what they had, they, they did a, a really good job. I just yeah. think like you have a lineup with Devin Booker, Bradley Beal and probably and what like 35 year old Kevin Durant and now Yusuf Nurkic like who is guarding on that team at enough of a championship level to where your team defense is going to be good enough to sustain itself in, in the playoffs and I just don't have faith in it looking at yeah. it right now yeah I think uh so I agree Aiden is clearly a better player than Yusuf Nurkic in basically every facet He's a better scorer. He's a better defender. Better rebounder. There's nothing on the court that I think Yusuf Nurkic at this stage of his career does better than prime DeAndre Aiden. He's young still in his prime. But I think it doesn't matter that, like you said, Donovan, clearly they fucking hated his guts. Yeah. We all thought it was an issue with, his, with the coach. The coach is gone and they still felt the need to trade him. To me, that clearly signals that Devin Booker probably didn't like playing with him because he's the only player that's left there for the whole time. Maybe KD wasn't rocking with him. And just the general ownership group thought that he was not a guy that should be in that locker room. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good he is. If one, he wants more touches. Two, he doesn't get along with the star. Three, he's just going to be a locker room cancer and not buy into the scheme that Frank Vogel needs the centers to do to be that rim protector. Then getting somebody less talented that's going to you know, not rock the boat and mesh with them might yeah. end up netting them being a better team. Exactly. Plus getting a defensive wing in little. Keon Johnson has potential. I don't think he has a whole lot going oh for him right God. now, but you no, know, he's a young guy. <laughs> I can't believe you just now, said like that. Like you said, pieces. <laughs> like, there's, yeah. to get stuff and remove a locker room issue, they probably net out positively. Exactly. That's Pro- what I'm saying. Like, they okay. got better and, like, worse at the same time. Like, when I think of, yeah, like, DeAndre Aiden, even though he's generally the better player, like you said, he's just a too school for too cool for school ass dude, and you don't need that on an NBA team who's trying to make 1980s deep phrase. ass runs. And it's facts as hell too, because you play Jock way. Longdale over him, bro. There's no instance where that should be <laughs> happening, no universe, but it happened. Think about it this way: if you were the Golden State Warriors, DeAndre Ayton is better at everything than Kevon Looney. Would you trade for DeAndre Ayton if you had Looney? Probably not, because you know Looney's going to buy into his role, and you already have other stars that demand a lot of attention and built around. You're not going to want to build around your fifth okay. starter. 
That's, You're not going to build it on the fifth starter. That's okay. That's that's true. The Warriors also have like a sustained culture to where like thing, things are moving. And the Suns are trying to build but, that, and he's an actively he hurts that. You know what I mean? Remember this, unless, dude. Unless you're talking, unless you're talking about the Warriors or the Heat, there's only so much that the power of friendship can take you. <laughs> and th- and so like for the Suns, they're probably gonna you know start training camp and they're gonna be very happy and they're gonna start the season and it's gonna be very good. Let's start, you know, playing a lot of games and you need somebody to, to actually guard people. And then you're looking mm-hmm. around and you're like, yo, Yusuf Nurkic is not doing his job. <laughs> like, I want to yes. see how happy they are with Nurkic 45, 45 games into the season. For what yeah. they need, I don't think it'll be that hard to try to find a replacement, whether that be through the buyout market or whatever free agents that are still trying to get into the league. But Regardless of the fact, if I was a Portland Trailblazers, I would do this because, again, he's a too cool for school dude. And he is someone during his rookie post-draft interview or whatever. This dude said, my goal is to get a max contract. That is the <laughs> worst sign possible. You're probably going to get that anyways with the way the NBA was going at the time, bro. You know, so yeah, that just tells you everything you need to I don't, I don't, I don't to read know. too much into that. I think that's just him being honest. I don't read too much into that. But I you think even honest. outside of this, let's say he's not. Okay, so he's probably he, just like a dick. He might just be a dickhead they don't like being around in the day. So that might be just be the issue. But let's give him benefit of the doubt and say it's not a personal issue. Maybe it was just a coaching thing. Him and Monty Williams didn't get along. And him and Devin Booker have a just fine relationship. Even if that's the case, the best thing he has over Yusuf Nurkic Frank Vogel. is his offensive skill set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying Monty Williams hated him. And non- Monty Williams is gone now. So gotcha. a lot of people were like, maybe Frank Vogel, the relationship will be fine. Mm. Clearly fucking not. They got him out of here. But even if that wasn't an issue, the best thing that he has over Yusuf Nurkic is his offensive skill set. He has touch for mid-range as a shooter, can do more with the ball in his hands, be a better finisher. Defensively, he's better than Nurkic a little bit, but you saw him in the playoffs. It's not like Aiden is he's, Aiden's not go bare. He's not locked down. He has incons- he has vast inconsistency issues and just isn't the toughest center. So all the things that he does better than Nurkic aren't super important to a team that has three star ball handlers and, exactly. and they're gonna create like 70% of your team's points. So maybe the benefits don't really matter for the specific team construction. They had a number one overall draft pick in the building. <laughs> and and they traded him for Grayson Allen and stuff. Like You could say that. Or I could say they had a bad contract. They had a max contract for their fifth starter who doesn't really have much impact because he's their fifth starter. No, nah, no. Nah, you can, you can never say that because you can't say that because he was in the 2018 draft class, which is historic. Shea, Trey, Luca trip all that like you can't say that bro you have the number one overall draft pick and like although like yeah like you know that contract which was which is still holds to be true the expectation will always be there no matter what yeah even though it's shifts and change he's not going to get the attention that he wants so you might as well send him somewhere he's going to get that and bring somebody in that that won't even be an issue with this team think about it we talk about that this team has so little margin for error because they have three stars who play the same way and they have a lot of weaknesses. If you can eliminate one of those weaknesses, which potentially could be locker room chemistry right away and have one less thing to worry about, you probably do it. Aiden's going to be upset when it's Scoot Henderson's team. He's going to be like, I still can't do it. Bro. So I, I can't go anywhere, man. I'm sorry. He's won't stop doing step backs. <laughs> He's going to be mad. <laughs> oh man, Jeremy Grant is still there too. This is gonna be. I don't, I don't see that's like not his team. He's, he's gonna be, <laughs> he's gonna be like the Blazers are going to prioritize Jeremy Grant, who they who they just paid a million dollars, not even a million, a billion dollars to. They're gonna yeah. prioritize Scoot Henderson, Anthony Simons, Shaden Sharp. You start looking on the list, and DeAndre Ayton once again is gonna be like the fifth option, and Bro. like. Nobody. No, he'll get touches. Scoot's still young. Listen, He's not gonna be demanding touches like that. Aiden will probably get more touches. But they Send are it. not. Bruh. But they are not worried about DeAndre Aiden getting touches like that. If it if it comes at the expense of Scoot Henderson, Simon Sharp, I, I at least not Scoot. Scoot's gonna be amazing, and that is his team right now. And I will, I will a hundred percent give him the keys. Aiden just has to be upset because he's been wanting to you know go go into the post, do his own thing, and it. It's still not going to be his team on a Bro. on a roster where they were like they were tanking last season. Yeah, I actually if, think it'll be a good fit for him because they have other guys, like you said, that are maybe long term in the franchise's viewpoint a bigger priority. But the problem in the Phoenix is they have three guys who want twenty. They're going to take twenty shots a game, so the math just isn't there for them. 
all the guys you talked about are bigger priorities, but Jamie Grant's not putting up 20 shots a game. Scoot's a rookie. Like, there'll probably be more opportunity for Aiden there than there ever was. For sure. How many shots does Jeremy Grant put up right right now? Uh, it's pushing eight. It's pushing 20. It's pushing 20 for sure. I think <laughs> it might it's be pushing like 16. Keep yeah. in mind, Lillard's missed a lot of time over the years, too. That's a lot of times he was getting them up when there was nobody there. Oh, no. He, D- he's, he dropped down. He yeah. dropped yeah. down. He, he's only yeah. at 15. If DeAndre yeah, yeah. Aiden wants oh, to have Dame's this gone? perfect, not as backup. <laughs> <laughs> as backup. He's if chunking. DeAndre Aiden wants to have like the perfect Wonderland where he can take all these middies and, like you said, Donovan, do all the post moves in the world. Yo, send him to the wasteland of the NBA, the Washington Wizards. You can ball out and do whatever the <laughs> hell you want over there. No one cares. No one will be watching. No, that's, that's Daniel Gafford's team. That's Daniel Gafford's team. He's going to take over. Oh, it's his man. year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I like this for the Blazers, honestly. I guess we can move on from the Suns, who it's, again, they got a worse player, but maybe it'll be less is more. The Blazers, how do you feel about it? Because, you know, the big talking point was they chose a package around Aiden over a package around Hero, probably because they already have guards and don't see Hero as a real easy fit with them. Do y'all think that was a mistake or was that right? No, I think that I think was they a did great the right decision. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think they, they did the right thing. It's like you don't have you don't have the space for Tyler Hero. And I don't think any of us here think that Tyler Hero is going to be some franchise-altering player. So you might as well get somebody who still is young, still has a little bit of potential, and fits with the pieces that you already have. And again, this is going to be Scoot Henderson's team eventually. And everybody hopes that that's going to be the case. And the Blazers have high hopes for him. So let's surround him with things that he doesn't have right now. And when you already have having Anthony Simons and Tyler Hero on the same team is extremely redundant and it would be extremely frustrating to watch on a nightly basis. So they Hmm. did the right thing going to get in. When I think about the pool and trailblazers, they're already fucked from the get go. You know, there's not much (laughs) they, they could have gotten, but doing what they did was perfect. And I prefer this trade rather than whatever they two picks or a pick from Miami simply because they're in the mindset of fix and flip. You know, what player can you extract the most assets and value out of? And I mean, it's crazy to say, but Drew Holiday, who stated, by the way, he's going to fucking probably retire in like two, three years, whenever his last contract is or whenever his contract ends, that'll probably be it for him. You know what I'm saying? So really, there's a world. You think his you think his shelf life is that small? He no, said he, that. Said that. Like, he said oh, that. He said that. Yeah, interview. Um, yeah he, exactly. But he in the same way that Drake's like, I'm gonna retire when I'm 35. Like he's thinking about mortality, but cap. Like when you yeah, see the 40 yeah. million dollars a year coming in, we'll see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree with you. But <laughs> regardless of the facts, like I think Drew Holiday is a more valuable asset. When even when he, even at his old age, he will be because there's gonna be some contending team who's yeah like feeding for that finishing piece similar to what the milwaukee bucks did back in 2021 now they're not going to like get him for a haul or anything like that but they're definitely going to get a first round pick now as for tyler hero you could bring him in shit may not work because he's redundant as fuck it's a it's a like he doesn't do anything that fits anthony simon's games well who you know i'm saying is one of the pieces of your franchise so it's like it doesn't really make any sense you're thinking long term and again you're being proactive about how you want to move in the future so shout out to hero though because low-key he's like actually no Giannis and dame are the biggest winners after that tyler hero is the biggest winner because he gets to stay in miami he doesn't have to go to to port hell yeah he's having a great time right now (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm glad you mentioned that uh that drew holiday can still be flipped because i forgot about that it's another element and yeah like you said they'll get one first round pick for him at least Maybe two if there's a bidding war at the deadline between contending teams that like maybe like you know the Clippers, the Heat, whoever else feels like they need someone to push them over the edge, they can maybe get two first round picks for him and make this deal end up being three picks and Aiton. Which I don't know. I think I'm the highest person in the world right now on Aiton. Still, I like him. I think he has a lot of inconsistency issues and clearly had a chemistry issue with the coach he had before and maybe the players. But I think he's good and people take his weaknesses and his issues he has in the locker room and like act like he's a fucking scrub. Hmm. I like him being the big next to Scoot in Simons. If Simon stays there long-term, like I think that's a solid addition to help, help those guards have a big that can, you know, you know, run those pick and rolls, get them assists. And like, you need a foundational big for a young guard. I think I agree. that's true. But how much is Anthony Simons going to like Deandre? 
<laughs> I just I, <laughs> I really can't speak on that. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean no, but like I'm looking at it from afar, and I actually really, from like a team building perspective, I see this as a major red flag that what? new like a new coach came in, and within two months they were like, "Nah, like you have to go." When they don't have like a center, like he was their number one overall pick five years ago. And they got a they got a new coach because he was beef with them. And there's only one player now on that Suns team that was on the team when they went to the finals two years ago. That to me, looking at the Suns, looking at everything that they're doing, and the fact that they were so willing to like to be a part of this trade and move on from from Aiton in this sense, that's really like revealing to me. And so it says I, to me that I, Booker didn't fuck with him, and like it is what it is. It shows to me that the whole organization didn't mess with him. Yeah, but then again, like we said, there's also basketball reasons why it makes sense to not have an offensive-minded center there when that's not an important part of the five for that team. So it might not be that. We can't just yeah. throw Aiden in the bus as being like a cancer. Like there, yeah. Maybe there's other reasons that could make sense. Donovan, not let these it. fans be happy for just two <laughs> seconds. You probably Ooh, you might be, be right. Let the, be the Blazers fans, let them be happy no, that they get cool. to move on No, they're this. cool. Listen, they did, they did the right thing because for months, the Heat and Pat Riley, who... Oh my How did God. you mess this up? This is a generational fumble from Pat Riley. The, like Dame came out and when he asked for the trade, he's like, listen, just trade me here. This is all I want to do. Can you guys just work it out? And Pat Riley couldn't figure it out, had all the momentum in the world and they couldn't do it. And so for Portland, shout out to y'all. They stood on business. They didn't take a bad deal, <laughs> right? Miami was like, hey, do you want do you want Jovic and Tyler here? And they're like, nah, like, can you add some something else? And Miami's just wouldn't do it. And they're like, okay, well, the deal's not going to get done. Like, they never folded. <laughs> so I really do like this for Portland. But this, from, like, yeah. Pat Riley, like, you messed this up because you just went to the, you just went to the Eastern Conference Finals back-to-back years. You've been to the Finals two times in, in four years. Jimmy Butler and Bam are right there. Like, you know that they are a piece away from actually winning a championship. And you fumbled at the one-yard line. That was a it's fantastic ridiculous. transition to the Miami facts. Heat and their struggles, facts, bro. Facts, facts. This offseason, they lost Gabe Vincent. I'm not going to say he moved mountains, but he was an important piece. You lost Max Struess. He didn't move mountains, but he was an important piece. You lost Cody Zeller. Whatever. You gained Jaime Hawkes. Nice. <laughs> who else did they gain? They, who else did they gain this offseason? Nobody. Richardson and Josh Richardson and Thomas Bryant. That's the Does highlight. it matter, bro? This is terrible. This is, uh, this is egregious. Fair. To be fair, they're going to somehow, with their voodoo magic, Pat Riley's going to put some grease in Josh Richardson's hair, and he's going to shoot 45% from three. So that'll probably be a decent piece. But <laughs> yeah, they lost all their guard depth, and they couldn't do anything about it because they were holding up their assets in hopes that this trade would materialize. And the fact that it didn't, they sat on their hands and did nothing to replace what they lost. It's got to be a disaster as a Heat bro, fan, right? Like, there's no I way to this other than that. Jimmy Butler, you have aging Kyle Lowry, bro. Them cheeks are getting <laughs> saggier by the day, bro. He's 39, oh 38. How <laughs> oh much ball God. does he have in him, bro? How many random ass 12 point performances, clutch performances can he give you? <laughs> Nothing. Jimmy Butler That's is fighting hilarious. for his life. <laughs> Bam out of bio can only do so, so much as a second option. Get this man some help. How can you see your team at the tippity top yeah. of the iceberg, bro? And just say, nah, I'm good. And continue to put gel and grease on here and just watch everything happen. Burn and unfold, bro. But they're the Miami Heat and they just do the most hey, random shit ever. And hey, hey, the they finals, got Justin Champagne. They, they might be all right. Get out of here. I don't, want, I don't want to hear about I don't want to hear about him. This is the second straight offseason that Miami has decided to stand pat and not do anything. And listen, Jimmy Butler has something. Make the finals. I, under, I understand. Jimmy Butler has, you know, whatever, you know, movie power inside of him that, can, that he could just will people to wins when the playoff comes around. That that ends here, and I know that like <laughs> okay. I was I was one of the people at the end of as I guess at the end of last or two seasons ago it started last season where I was like oh like we have to give Miami their credit, and people were were kind of counting them out, and now everyone just doesn't want to count Miami out. I will do it. The Miami Heat are the Miami <laughs> oh Heat are gosh. done. They are they're done they're done they're cooked. They if they wanted to do something they should have made a move this offseason. They should have got Dame, and they didn't. And so I'm listen. That Kyle Lowry is still a foundational part of this team. And like Mo said, he is old 
in the several cheeks ways. are saggy. Say it, Donovan. I'll say it for you. The cheeks are no, saggy. No, 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 no. Sex you appeal is gone. You got it. Say it. Those are your words, not mine. <laughs> no, they're your words. <laughs> Those are your, no, no, no. That phrase. Hey. That's a most special. No, that's no, 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 so no. You're no. saying. Oh, so Donovan's saying the sex appeal is still there. He's standing by last episode. Oh, and he's saying Kyle Lowry's carried by sex appeal. These cameras are I'm 4K saying, now, boy. You can't Kyle escape Lowry. this. <laughs> I'm saying that Kyle Lowry needs to be in a carpool line and needs to be picking up his kids and be a family man, and he should not be on the court in the NBA Finals, and he won't help the Heat get there and they messed up <laughs> by, by not getting Dame. That's what yeah, I'm, I'm I agree. Now that the more I'm thinking about it now, they lost Struce and Gabe Vincent. Maybe they're just Miami merchants and maybe Miami makes everybody look good. Maybe Jaime Jaquez and Richardson can just give them the same thing. Richardson is not that different from Struce. Jaime could maybe give them the same impact as Gabe Vincent. So maybe they'd be all right. But like you said, it's just complacency when sure they've earned the right to run it back when they made the finals and you were so close feeling like you had a chance to win the championship. But do any of us, like you said, you don't, you, you're counting them out. Does anybody really think that they should have been there? Like they earned it and they were in that position, but talent wise, it's not like they were so good and so confidently the best team in the East that they should have that type of confidence. You know what I mean? Bro, the, it's, they, it's, they have bro. the same type of irrational confidence that the Toronto Raptors have in OG and Renobi. That delusion where you're just like, Raptors. oh, we like that, bro. We no, like that. Facts, yeah, though. we ain't got that's no facts. worries, bro. We're going to make it back. We're going to spin the block. What are you talking about? The NBA <laughs> is getting better and better. What are you waiting for, bro? This is your time to strike. You know what I'm saying? Like sitting on your <laughs> exactly. hand, just looking at the sky, bro. It's like it irritates my soul because now you're just wasting uh, Jimmy Butler who could have one of the greatest underdog stories of all time. Exactly. They've Strong made it to the finals two years off of pure irrational confidence. And now <laughs> one of the best players in the league says, I want to go there. And you've looked at your team and probably have known for the last two years. Oh, yeah, we're we're a piece away from like actually deserving and being good enough to be in this position. And we don't have to like hope that everything breaks our way or hope that we just, you know, play the Celtics who, who can't figure out how to win a championship. But they decided to sit on that they fumbled this is a this is a move where like they are going to regret not doing for years to come because i think that if they got dame the fit that we're talking about with milwaukee and having dame and chris and Giannis and that being beautiful the chemistry between yep. dame jimmy and bam would have also been one of the best trios in the league and so it's not like you were you know just throwing stuff together hoping that the basketball works the basketball was going to make sense it was yeah. going to be good. And you you chose not to follow that path. It's 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 frustrating. It, I agree. it really yeah. is frustrating. The way we're talking about the Bucks as the clear championship favorites could have been the heat today if they would have put the assets in, but I don't know. Maybe a lot of people always want to have teams go all in and cash out. And sometimes it proves to be better to rock with what you got and give, you know, team chemistry and consistency time to go. We'll see if that's the case with them. I don't think any of us believe it will be, but they've proven us wrong so many times. I'm hesitant yeah. to completely write them off. Yeah, I can never write them off. After what they did last year, especially with the rosters that they had top to bottom, bro, I can never write them off again. I will give them, I will definitely be on their neck and applying hell pressure and just point out the flaws and the complacency that they've had especially specifically this season or this off season with the golden opportunity that wasn't handed to them, of course, because I'm sure the Portland Trailblazers were trying to yank their entire arm and stuff like that. But at that point, do it because this is a clear gateway that puts you at the upper echelon of the NBA. So, man, the Miami Heat, I just now if I'm a Miami Heat fan, all you got to do is ride it out. Let Jimmy try to carry you through all these treacherous times. Um, I can't say anything Forced. on this podcast. That's bro. like your fourth. I literally can't like say anything. Fourth time this show. Like, what has happened hey, to man, society? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Anyways, look, they're they're cooked. They they are not making the conference finals. Like they're yeah. they're mm. not they're just not doing it. I wouldn't pick them either, but not gonna run them off. Yeah. I think that's enough conversation about all the teams involved in this trade. I think we should move on to what the episode is titled around, and we should take. The Damian Lillard and Giannis pairing and rank them along with the other duos in the league and give them our top 10 duos. Let's do it. You guys ready for this? Let's roll. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. So I, let me tell you guys what I was thinking with this list. I want a mixture of talent and accomplishment because, you know, both matter. <laughs> I leaned a little bit towards recent success and not just talent. You'll see that with one specific uh, ranking on here. 
But end of the day, the baseline is who are the best players in the league playing together. That's what it is for me. Okay. Yeah, so, would you? Uh, let's start from 10 and go down to one. We'll do that. Okay. We'll go one by one given. Yeah, we'll each give our same number and keep going. First off, at number 10, I have John Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr. Wow. Okay. Were they um, in your guys' lists? Because I, I I didn't know. If, if they for that. sure they're on my list. They have to be on my they list. Are. Like they've they, they're they they did not make my list. They're a proven okay. playoff duo. Even though they haven't done much in the playoffs, they can fucking are get they? there. Yeah, they I mean they, they can fucking get there, bro. And we forget just a couple years no, ago. They didn't. they didn't make didn't the conference they? finals. No, they didn't make oh, the conference tripping? finals. No. Um Okay, I'm tripping. Never mind. Yeah. But they did have You're right. Why did I say f- that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I, I think I was confused in my head with them making a two seed as them having an accomplishment. <laughs> that yeah. was that popped in my head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um I, I like that. I like that. I put them a little bit higher because I'm kind of projecting into the future and Jaw is still Jaw, even though he's a delinquent. Um he's still one of the best point guards in the NBA and John Moran. Uh, not John Moran. Jaren Jaren Jackson Jr. The allegations spotlight will be on you this season for sure because of that FIBA performance and all that other shit. But oh, who cares? It's FIBA. Defensive player of the year. He's nah, still a great fucking player, bro. Yeah, so, yeah. You okay. have a defensive player of the year, legitimately one of the best defensive players alive, and an all NBA guard. I, I okay, I'm curious to see who you have at ten, Donovan, to lead them off. My first cut was Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. Ooh. That's the one I considered over them. I just went with these two because I feel like Jaws comparable to Donovan Mitchell and Jaron has just done a little bit more than Don, than Darius Garland has. But I wouldn't mm. be mad at them swapping out. Nice. Well, well, I'm glad you said that because that's that's my ten. <laughs> 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 that's that's my that's my ten too. I have D Mitch and, and Darius Garland. Okay, so I get that. Were yeah. you considering putting Jaron and Ja? Yeah. They were I I made my list top down. So mm-hmm. I was like rattling off duos and so like I just didn't get to Ja and Jaron Jackson Jr. But um so it wasn't like a first cut type of thing. But I do I just like the parent of I know that it's like two small guards and it's very hard to to win in the playoffs with that. But they I think having a backcourt with them and both of them being so dynamic on the ball, like they can play, they play off each other so well. They give your team so much flexibility offensively to always have an elite ball handler. Like they are, they're great. And so I'm, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to put them at 10. Yeah. The only problem is too, they give zero offensive, I mean, defensive production between the two of them. Like it's not even like there's like one, like Jaron and Ja. Ja doesn't give you anything defensively. Jaron does. Like it's not split. It's just like two non factors. <laughs> So I think that yeah. was a weighted down for me. Yeah, I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it. At my number 10, um, it kind of feels weird to say, but genuinely, I just feel like they're number 10, and it's De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis. Um, great offensive duo. Okay. You know? they, did not, they, but, not, they did not make my list, but I'm after last year, they, I, they, they deserve, deserve that respect. Yeah, they deserve it. I don't know it. if with, they deserve it, but it's understandable. And my with what De'Aaron Fox did last season, especially in the clutch and how consistent Sabonis was. Although, yes, Isaac, we all know you. He has Sabonis has genuine flaws. It went to where I think they have limitations, fraud. and that's why he didn't even do shit to you, man. You're calling him a fraud. <laughs> he, he hasn't had real playoff failures that are blunders. We we all saw his flaws and all that, but real playoff failures. All that he, just said, got, he just got fucking decimated by Draymond Green. What do you mean? He got the Sonic coins kicked out of him. We all know. <laughs> <laughs> he got put in a blender for seven games, doing absolutely nothing of value. De'Aaron was hard carrying because they said, I'm going to sit in the paint, make you shoot. And he fell apart. Yeah, De'Aaron was trying to carry with his broken pinky. But regardless of the fact, yeah. with what they did so far, high level offense, they I have to give him the nod to put him here at number 10. Respect. Me. That's fair. Okay, so I, I'm curious who you left off then because... You have Ja and Jaren up high, so you must have left somebody off. Well, that I don't have them included. high. I don't have them high. Yeah, but either way, you have them on here. So yeah. th- it's one of two duos you must have left off. I'm curious to see which one. Let's I'll go see. forward. At nine, I have Joel Embiid and James Harden, <laughs> which is Ooh. crazy low. If you asked me a year ago, I would have been like three. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm so jaded by these players. Like, I've been a James Harden fan for a decade, and... Just the constant disappointment in the playoffs. Now he has big James Harden next to him who does the same shit every year. I I can't convince <laughs> myself that this hilarious. team is going to be good in the playoffs until I see it. 
So until further, until they prove otherwise, this team's going to fail in the playoffs every year, and I can't put them higher knowing that's going to be the outcome. You see, I did not put them in this tier list because, not tier list, my bad, but in this list because James Harden literally, last night or two nights ago, he was in a fucking club in Houston with signs with Botter Girls holding J- D- uh, Daryl Morey is a liar. It's on God, and no one cares <laughs> because that? Damian Lillard, <laughs> yes, bro. It's on Twitter, Nikhil. Look that shit up, bro. He's on, he was on, he was at the club with that shit up there. So That's I'm crazy. like, I can't put him up there. I can't put Joel Embiid with whatever player Tyrese Maxey on this list because I, I like Tyrese Maxey doesn't have the accomplishments, and also I don't think he's necessarily as good just yet as anybody <laughs> else. So it's like, bro, how can you put Jade James Harden in this list, bro? You know what I'm saying? This like, I just can't. Do it. it's, it's fucking insane. It's so immature, bro. You have bottle girls holding that shit up. How much did he pay for it? <laughs> I can tell him more. He's a liar. <laughs> I got to pull up the camp. <laughs> so facts, I go. It looks lit. You should have been outside. No, thanks. That's down the block. <laughs> but that's fair. If you if you want to not include Harden because the fact that he's not going to be a Sixer that much longer, go ahead. I was like, he's still a Sixer. It doesn't look you like see, they're about to trade him before the season started, so they're probably going to start the year with him on there. And they're too talented to not have them on the list at all. But they got to be towards the bottom. So I thought they were on there. I thought the complete inverse of you, but I digress. <laughs> Don't know what your list looking like. <laughs> What's number nine? I got the same thing as Isaac. I have James Harden and Big James God. Harden. <laughs> 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 like I wanted to give them just a little bit of respect just because like MB did win MVP. Yeah. But like it's but like Isaac said, they are generational chokers. We've yeah. I don't think we've ever seen this combination of, of choking on one team. <laughs> Pause. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and so like And with Doc Rivers as a coach, bro, nobody's ever choked as hard as they choke. Yeah. Whoa. Like okay. deep to their core, they choke. Like that is crazy. Okay. Wow. Nice. Nice set of <laughs> words. Just right large there. amounts of choking and just I'm versatility in the amount of okay. types of choking. At number nine, <laughs> I have um <laughs> uh, shit. You know my mom be watching this shit, bro. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Anyways, um, number nine, I have Ja Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, fair enough. I like them better than Sabonis and Fox and. They are. They just have a bright future together in my mind. Feed off of each other perfectly, and I don't know what necessarily Jaron Jackson Jr.'s max potential is, but I see a clear pathway to John Morant being a consistent top three point guard in the entire NBA and just being an absolute force. So yeah, yeah. I don't know what to expect from Jaron's next couple of leaps either. I think there's yeah. still there's room for improvement. He can make some offensive leaps. But I don't. It's not a guarantee. He this might be near final product, Jaron Jackson. So, and if it is, that's they great. can definitely. Get, yeah, for sure. So that's why they're in the top ten. I don't know how much higher they can jump, but I won't be shocked if they jump into like close to top five territory. If Jaron can continue, they, they, they just have to win games. That's yeah. that's really it. that's all they can do. Mm-hmm. And they've done it. They've for their whole tenure together. They've, they've been a successful team, especially for the standards they inherited. They didn't inherit a good roster. They made it a good roster. Like I mean, they, they, they don't have. They have one you know playoff I mean? series win. Like this is. Yeah, but they're a constant top, top three seed in the West, which is not easy to do for a young team. And they immediately so, <laughs> became that good. So consistently top three and only one playoff series win. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, there's different circumstances involved in that. Last year. There was all the hoopla, and the year before that, they lost to the Warriors, who were the team that won it all. So, like, you know, like, they didn't fail. They lost to the Warriors and lost to the Lakers in a hard-fought series when there was outside circumstances that ruined their team chemistry. And also, Job broke his hand. That's very important. And Steve Adams was in there. So, like, and Brandon Clark wasn't there. Yeah, so. So They never really had a big for Didn't they score nine points in the first quarter? (laughs) <laughs> oh my god they did they got their backs blown out absolutely embarrassed bro oh hey, my god Anthony davis masterclass the best defensive player of the in the year of, of the playoffs put on a masterclass that series i give the credit to him more than i do the grizzlies family so listen yeah. if you could score double digits in the first quarter you can move up my list <laughs> you can do like, that you can you can be higher <laughs> That That's game was funny. an Anthony Davis masterclass and a Dylan Brooks disaster class, bro. It was <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> All right, man. Number eight, another similar circumstance to Harden and Big Harden, but a little bit different. I have Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Another one that talent-wise should be top three, four, at worst five, but they just can't get it done. And not for the same reason. It's not because they're at their core chokers. 
Not the problem with them. They're just at their core brittle. And at the, this point, they choke because they can't stay healthy and give themselves a chance because they've just been unlucky and it's not broken that way for them with their legs. Hmm. So it's the same thing where until they have a chance to actually do it, I can't rank them high. That's, that's great. Nikhil N- just titled them the Brittle Bros. <laughs> <laughs> I love, that's fantastic. That's yeah, good like, content. It's not even really their fault. Like there's been times where like in the bubble, they fell apart. It's the bubble that happened. Like Paul George had a good run to the conference finals without Kawhi. Kawhi was looking great last year before he got hurt. They come so close to putting it together, but there's always something in their way outside of their control. And I can't give them a pass for being unlucky. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. I can't go against that. Very valid argument. That's but I'm not. I don't have as much vitriol for them as like Donovan probably does. Like I don't really hold it against them. It's not their fault. It's just unlucky. They get hurt a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny. We'll, we'll, listen, we'll talk about them later. I, I, I might, and I actually feel kind of nasty doing this. Oh God! But I'm putting Luca and Kyrie at eight. What oh. the hell? Okay, I didn't off put them of, in my top ten at all because it hasn't been a time. Wow! Listen, off of purely Luca's talent, I think Luca yeah. is. Lu- Okay. He's one he's one of the best players in the world and when they are on the floor together offensively they're they're fantastic and I think that they actually do work a little bit better than people thought that they were going to work um like you know when when the trade first happened people was like oh like how what are what are you know late games uh, situations going to look like who's going to take the last shot they actually work pr- really well um in tandem and Kyrie plays off ball a lot a lot better than people give him credit for so Oh for sure. I think that last season Listen, last season was a disaster, and I don't want to give give them a pass for that. But I also knew that last season was going to be bad. And so I think that this year, you give them a full training camp. You give them kind of like an offseason to figure out everything, let things kind of calm down. And so this is a little bit projecting, but I do like them a little bit more than than the first two that That's I have fair. on my list. I can agree yeah, they'll that. definitely earn the way onto this list for sure. I just didn't do it yet just because... All we've seen, the only evidence we have is failure. Until that's they fair. can go 500 together, I can't put them <laughs> that's, top 10 yet. Listen, that's that's fair. I told you, I didn't feel great about doing this. But, <laughs> Luka's, but like Luca and and like Kyrie, even as like crazy as Kyrie's last few years has been, whenever he's been on the floor, he's Incredible. still been, he's been extremely productive. So yeah, I respect it. If you're, if, if, you're looking for, if you're looking forward to next year, that's perfectly valid. I, I probably should do the same thing realistically because, you know, we're in a new calendar year. We're going forward. Not everything's about last year anymore. I, I feel it. It's fun. But yeah. you do have to account for what you did see, and you're not wrong for that, Isaac. But um, just like you, Donovan, I do have them on my list in a similar range. But actually, at number eight, I have Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. Um, oh, okay. I, they're fucking Surprising. Great. Okay. I wish I could put them higher. But I feel like everyone else that I have above them has just simply has a higher ceiling as a duo. Not even talking about a team. That's a whole different conversation that I'm not trying to have right now. But as a duo, I think they they bounce off of each, they bounce off of each other pretty well. And there's nothing that these guys can't do outside of like play great defense, which is like what's kind of holding them <laughs> outside of half back. the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. But when it comes to offense, they got the whole nine, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they can Mitchell's do half fucking, of everything really well. <laughs> yeah, Donovan Mitchell's a lob threat. He's a great secondary playmaker. Darius well, Garland is a lob fucking threat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is bro. He Griffin? <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. He can be that if he fucking wants to. He's Donovan Mitchell, Spidey Man. <laughs> but <Blazer>. like, <laughs> Carol X. Hey, you, 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 hey, with how you were in love with the Cleveland Cavaliers last year? My bad, my that, bad. I'm, I forgot yeah. your mom watches this. My bad. <laughs> I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> I appreciate that, but yeah, I got them. I got them at eight. Um, I I could easily see them growing on this list to maybe top six. Or like top yeah. five, but that's just like a superstar power type thing at that at that point. The thing I'm wondering is, we, is it eventually going to be the D Mitch and Mobley duo? Is Mobley going to pass up Garland and be that <laughs> second star to Mitchell? I feel like they might need to for this team to really hit their ceiling. I don't. I don't think that they need him to be. I think as long as you have those two guards, you're good. You just can't have Mobley be a negative offensively, and you need yeah. him to be actually like competent plus and then mm-hmm. once once he gets competent plus offensively then i think <laughs> you can move jared allen out the way you can start you know worrying about the fit a little bit more but he just can't be 
you know, what he was yeah. in the playoffs last year. He has to be as good as Jaron Jackson offensively. He has to have that perimeter That's shooting, yeah. a little bit of ball handling to create a little bit. Like, he's got to be as good as Jaron, I think. Facts. Is De'Aaron, okay, just random side question. Is Who's better, Darius Garland or Jaron Jackson Jr.? Ooh. Because, like, I, that's trying Jaren, your philosophy right there, Jaren, you just said. And I, Jaren you think right Jaren's now, better? Wow. Yeah. I mean, he's a be- he's defense player of the year, caliber rim protector, and being a good offensive player. I that's, think, that's you know, tough. and Garland, okay, granted, we, we said it before, point guard defense doesn't matter that much. But when it comes to the fact that Jaron brings that much defensively, you he's, Garland should bring a little bit of something, you know? Like, it's hard. Garland is not, like, a true offensive mastermind to make up for that entirely. The way Jaren is defensively, I kind of disagree. Actually, no, that's generous. Jaren's not a mastermind yeah. defensively. That's generous. <laughs> yeah, one thing I say. See, I challenge I you on that wow. because Actually, I don't it's know. such Maybe a side note, bro. That's, that's I love hard. Garland because uh, he is a fucking. Wow. In, he's a great scorer and also he's a fucking fantastic facilitator. And I think your ceiling is a lot higher when you have someone who's solidified and insane at what he does compared to someone who, like Jaren Jackson, is going to give you consistent defense, but the fouling issue. And also, you're six eleven, but DPOI, you get, you grab me, you, you give me the same amount of rebounds as fucking Drew Holiday on a. Night, Why are you talking about FIBA basis, still? Bro. Fuck FIBA. This isn't. FIBA. I, this is a consistent <laughs> issue for his entire career. It's not only He's FIBA. Let's be NBA. real, bro. Yeah, this is He's NBA. This has been. An, this has been him He's in a big a, MSU. Like this has been him his entire life, bro. This rebounding and fouling has been like the biggest issue of his NBA of his basketball career, point blank. Period. It just Wait, got exposed. I don't and think his rebounding hurts his team, though. I think his rebounding is fine. I, like, I, he's not you're, a, you're right. He's not a he's not a like a super impactful rebounder. I agree, but you know that's why he plays next to a center. That's why he'd never be a starting center. But uh, yeah, obviously the fouling is an issue. You're right. As a big, I'll, yeah. I'll take. So I think, I think I'll take going. Darius. I think I'll take Darius just because I would get less annoyed with the fouling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's just a personal. Yeah. Thing. I get it. It's hard. I, I I might go Darius too. The more I think about it, but that, that that's a tough one. You might have just asked us who's better, the 34th best player in the league or the 35th. Like, they might be, like, yeah. right next to each other. Yeah. That's a great comparison, man. I know. But right. I love basketball. We'll go on number seven. At number seven, I have Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Wow. Who I feel like that's too low. But when I went, we'll talk about it when we get to the next names above them. I ended up going with a duo right above them that I feel like is just more talented. And I didn't let the the you know, results blind me with Jimmy and Bam. Like, it's easy to be like, they made a finals again. They should be top three or top four. I, it's a team game. A lot of circumstances come into play. I don't know if Bam is the caliber of player that makes me put them above more talented duos who haven't who haven't had as much recent success. So uh, we'll wait until we see the bigger names when I have those arguments. I know exactly where you're going with six. And yeah. listen, we're, we're in lockstep right now because I have Jimmy Butler and Bam at seven too. Okay. I I just I think that when you talk about the success, I want to give that success more to Jimmy Butler in like an individual type sense, <laughs> yeah. rather rather than play oh. um you know on the duo. I know that Bam has had um his moments off offensively, but he has also been inconsistent in terms of like you know like a very very good offensive player. Um, yeah. In the, in the playoffs, I want to give them their credit because they are one of the more successful duos that we've seen on this list. But actually, once you get into the top five, a lot of them are really, really hard to, uh, yeah. to overcome. So, yeah, I think this is like six is probably the highest I can go with. That. Yeah. Yeah. There's one debate between seven and six. After that, it's like no brainer, I think. Yeah. Wow. What about you, Mo? Where are you going? With we're almost right here, um, but we're not, sadly. I have Luca and Kyrie at seven. Um, okay. This is me projecting because, like, I think, like you said earlier, Donovan, like, although, yeah, they weren't all that great and all that other shit last season from what we've seen, but I'm going to, like, although, like, we're just talking about straight up duels and how well they play off of each other. And just when it comes to one, two punch in the NBA, I think they are that. Um, and I think once they have people around them who can play deep and just simply play their fucking role. <laughs> like, dunk, <laughs> run, dunk, jump man, and also somebody at the corner, Grant Williams. It's all they need, bro. And I think they'll be able to bounce back <coughs> or bounce off of each other pretty well. And, um, yeah, I'm just projecting hella, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I respect it. Like, I didn't even really consider them because I was going off last year, but I, I respect the line of thinking. Like, they're obviously going to be on this list next year, so... Why even wait? Like, you know where they're going to be. You might as well Facts. project. So yeah. I get it. 
it's yeah. Luca. It's like a star power thing for me also. Like if Luca if Luca yeah. was like any worse, then I'm like I'm not considering it. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah. kind of how it is with uh, Harden and Big Harden. I'm like he won MVP, so he's got to be on here. Luca's better than him. And he doesn't fall apart in the playoffs, so maybe I should have put him on there anyways. That's that's true, Isaac. Before before you get to six, I want to say my six first because I want to see if I if we're actually like here. I want to see. Want to say the same time? You. Three, two, one. Yeah. We'll say the team name. Three, two, one. Okay. All right. Three, Three. two, one. Celtics. Sons. Damn. Oh, <laughs> y'all are oh, not here. Shit. Oh, we're not aligned. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So at six, I have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. At six, Donovan wow. has Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Yeah. Spoiler wow. alert, I didn't even hesitate. Katie and Booker are easily higher. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. I put them I put them here. I thought that this was like the highest I could put them because we haven't really like their talent obviously speaks for itself. They just haven't played it all together. So this was the like everybody above them has legitimate success outside of one that like was recently formed. But like yeah. they are this feels like the high end of their range for me. I wanted to give Tatum as listen, as much as I hate on the Celtics and as much as I clown them, they've they've been one of the more successful teams over the last four or five years. I have so. Katie and Booker very high. I think apparently it's gonna shock you. I just think that it's like Do you have it's like a, I, I don't answer that question. More than, I won't confirm more than I anything, but I clearly have them top five. You're and a nasty guy. I think it's just like they're so fucking good. Yeah. It's like we're holding time against Luka and Kyrie because they immediately failed. So it's like, how can I not? I'm not going to hold time against Evan Booker and KD. They didn't fail. They put up, they did well. Like, you know, they lost to the better team at the end of the day, but they both showed out. KD didn't have the best start to the series against the Nuggets. Devin Booker was on fucking fire. KD recovered. He's still Kevin Durant. I think if you have two top 10 players, which Devin Booker's pushing the door as a top 10, he's probably top 10 these days. You're gonna be top five, you know, especially when you haven't had failures like Harden and Big Harden. Like, you gotta be top five, I think. I like that, man. I like that. Yeah, I agree. I agree for sure. I I don't think you guys' placement is outrageous. Which one I would pick out of out of the two, Tatum and Brown at six, or KD and Booker at six? Uh, KD and Booker are higher for me as well. Top five okay. for Who's sure. Your six? Um, but at my six is actually your seven. You guys are seven. Jimmy Butler and Bam. Verbatim, okay. literally the same exact stick that you guys said. We can just go ahead and move on to the top five. Okay, you give your five, Mo. Let's go back to you. Let's snake this. All right, number five, Tatum and Brown. Now, I wish okay, I could so put them higher. I wish I could put them higher um, because, you know what I'm saying, they've came so close on a consistent basis to, you know what I'm saying, finally lifting up that trophy at the end of the season. But as a duo, I don't think, like, Obviously, we all know. We've been talking about this for a minute. They don't complement mm-hmm. each other perfectly whatsoever. They're exactly. the same archetype of player. Well, not necessarily archetype. They do different things, obviously. But they don't necessarily help each other's strengths at all, bro. And they don't cover each other's weaknesses. That's the biggest point right there. Facts. They don't cover each other's weaknesses. Like someone Facts. like Giannis does to Damian Lillard or Jokic does to Jamal Murray. Even though, you know what I'm saying, Jamal Murray... And Jalen Brown are like, yeah, type players. What Jamal Murray has, the passing of Jokic just pushed him to the upper echelon. You know what I'm saying? I can say that's about the same thing about several other players. And there's nothing, but there's no synergy between this duo. It's just like, you you can hoop and get a bucket, and you can hoop and get a bucket, and y'all can both play defense. (laughs) But that's it, bro. Yeah. And to be fair, you could say something similar about KD and Booker. I just think that they're just more talented. Like, (laughs) Tatum's better than, Tatum might be better than KD these days. That's fine. Booker clears Jalen Brown so fucking easy. It's not even a competition. So that's what gave them the bump to me to put them in another stratosphere. I agree with you about Tatum and Brown. They don't compliment each other at all. I ding them the same reason I ding Mitchell and Garland, where I feel like they're two very talented players, but they're not in the sense of a duo, like you said, elevating each other. It's not like, you know, Harden and Big Harden, they run their pick and roll, can feed each other, and you can, in the same play, get your two best players the same level of impact and both contribute to winning in one play. Can't do that too much in Mitchell and Garland. I don't think you can do that at all with Tatum and Brown. I agree. And that's what it comes down to. Like, it just comes down to people above them are either more accomplished or more talented because Jalen holds Tatum back a little bit. I mean, just a little bit. Tatum, Brown's still great, obviously, but yeah, the I things mean, like, above him, I think, are different, different tiers. Yeah, I agree. 100%. Donovan, who's your five? I have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I think like, listen, these are two guys that are both all NBA caliber players. And in terms of 
everybody else on on the list that we've already said, they have gone. Actually, well, you can make an argument that Jimmy and Bam have gone farther since they've made two finals, but they are consistently at at the top, and I think that they are just better than uh, Jimmy Butler and Bam. But while I agree that like the best duos complement each other and like they cover up each other's weaknesses, that's and listen, we're gonna see that as this list progresses. There's also something to what Mo said: you could hoop and get a bucket. And you could hoop and get a bucket. <laughs> and so I think that yeah. for their failures, this is also on the Boston Celtics for not surrounding them with a, a legitimate point guard. And they instead told Marcus Smart to run point instead of going out and getting a legitimate point guard. And even this offseason, you still didn't do what you needed to do. You went and got Kristaps Porzingis. So we'll see how that works out. But I don't think that their flaws, I think their flaws are partially not. Yeah, I think it's their fault. I also think that it's management's fault for not hooking them up with somebody who can cover them up and making them one of the best trios in the league. But this, yeah. if you are starting a team with this duo, your team is set up for success in a very, very great way. For sure. Yeah, and that's why we, I have him at six. He has him at five. I just think all, everything you said applies to Katie and Booker as well. They're just like both better than those yeah. buckets. Like it's just like the same, it's like the same duo, but just better in most ways. Besides obviously Tatum is so much better defensively than Katie. Actually, I was going to say Tatum is so much better defensively than KD, but KD's, listen, old man KD is putting on a defensive renaissance in his career, so maybe that's not even true. He is better. Most, Tatum is better, but maybe it's not a wide margin. Yeah, I don't know. It's exactly. hard to it's hard to gauge KD compared to other players these days because he's so hurt. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, sure. at five, I don't have KD and Booker. They're higher. At five, I have Steph and Draymond. Wow. <laughs> okay. Nice. And I like that's, that. It's a debate. I think that this is just like Steph and insert second best player here. Yeah. <laughs> I gave Draymond the nod over Clay because Draymond is so important to their defense and keeps them afloat on that side of the ball. Foundational player. Even his short roll passing offensively makes our system go. He's so important. He is the X's and O's schemes just as much as Steph is. They both are completely essential. And that's why Steph is, it's why Dre is part of the duo. He's just so much less talented than say Devin Booker. Steph, so Steph I can't. back hurt in this bitch, bro. His back hurt. Man yeah. got scoliosis when it comes to this shit, bro. He's easily <laughs> the worst player probably on this entire list. But or Draymond specifically. But like it doesn't matter he's because so important. he's so that team doesn't go without mm -hmm. without him, you know? Like yeah, sorry to say, say. But he's the worst player on this list. Yeah. But he wasn't always. You know, he's just an older, diminished version of himself. He kind of lost that offensive punch. Yeah. But the fact that he can still have this much value to a very successful team, despite not being the athlete he once was, says so much about him and how important he is as a player. Facts. So I think that still makes him a top five duo easily. Clearly, you guys agree. But I just, again, KD and Booker are going to be two top ten players. That is so hard to put together. Bro, if Draymond could shoot like how we was shooting back in 2015, 2016, 2014 type <laughs> shit... Then it's just one be. game. It's just one game that he, that he, was, that he was doing like that. <laughs> no, he, he shot forty percent. He shot like thirty eight percent for a year, though. No, I yeah, know, but that, that that one game was the highlight of his career. That game seven. <laughs> that changes. Nikhil, you don't history, have to put bro. up Draymond stats. I know. I'm. Don't, 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 I'm capping. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. I agree with all your points. So Isaac, um, Draymond Green is just irreplaceable. Uh, I'm sure, like when people think of duos, or most people, they might think Steph and Clay because point per game stuff and whenever like the generic basketball fan just looks at any page look at the who's averaging the first most points the second most points and that's the deal <laughs> yeah. but really like you know clay when you think of it stylistically clay is fucking fantastic and he helps make that team go too because he understands the game and he is able to maximize his talents but if i'm keeping it a bean you clay is replaceable i hate to say that because he is monumental to that team but he's also like you know at this state at this age, state and yeah. age too like he's not yeah. he's not like that anymore or, yeah. or at least he's proven to be that not like that <laughs> yeah but okay so I'll might as well reveal my next one at four I have KD and Booker mm. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put Steph and Dre above them because they deserve the credit go ahead going forward I think KD and Booker are clearly the better duo the Warriors can end up being the better team because of everything that comes into the, that equation. But I think just two players versus two players, it's them. Listen, if we're doing two and if we're doing two on two at the park, like, yeah, I'll take Katie and Booker. <laughs> 
four chips. And Great. I, and I, I think <laughs> four more at this point four, in their careers, probably four, not. Four chips. And I think that <laughs> like, but for them to be as in sync as, as they are, like, I don't think that there's any duo in the league that is as connected as they are. And we've talked about it. Steph handles offense. Dre handles defense. And even though that Draymond doesn't even want to look at the basket offensively, he's still able to be uh, positive on that end sometimes with his screening and his passing. And so, yeah, I'm putting them at four. I'm going to give them my respect. And everybody else on this on this team, if Draymond could average, you know, 10 points a game, they might get to three, but he doesn't. So I'll put him at four. Okay, yes. that's fair. I ain't mad at it whatsoever. What about you, Mo? Who's your number four? Uh, at my number four, I have KD and Booker, too. Um, Look at us. I would say, like, you know, when it comes to having <laughs> synergy and <Hold> being... <laughs> you left somebody off. Oh, I Ooh. did. There's three teams left that have to be accounted for. You left somebody off. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I... Hold on, let me see. One, two, three. <laughs> Yeah, I. Anyways, yeah, that's fair. Again, you have never same same position as I do. I respect it. Oh shit! No, I did. My bad. I just leaked my list. Actually. (laughs) Oh shit! So I had um Steph and Dre. My bad. (laughs) I had Steph and Dre next, and then I just leaked it. Whatever. At four, um, or my bad. At three, I fucking had. Okay, so say say your names real quick. Who who's what? Who's where? (laughs) What is happening? (laughs) I know. (laughs) I'm I'm so confused. I fucked up my list, bro. I fucked up my list. So Steph and Dre are yikes, bro. Steph and okay, Dre. Was- <laughs> God, bro. I think I fucked up my list now that I'm looking at it. I you left did. someone you left somebody off. off completely. Yeah, I left someone off and I'm looking at my list and I'm not seeing the correlation right now. But at four I had Katie and um Katie and Booker. And then at three, I think I put Steph and Dre. Okay. So yeah. most three, Steph and Dre. Yeah, that's three fair. I put stuff in. Yeah, you, you, I know exactly who he left off. But that's only. Yeah, you know who I. You know who I ended up leaving off of a list: PG and Kawhi. But at I got although I wanted to put them boys on there. Obviously, it wouldn't be in this territory. Who else did I leave off? Oh Let's shit! Yeah, we'll, we'll let you find out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Three, this is bad radio. I'll keep going. At number three, I have LeBron and Anthony Davis. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's great. That's good. Man, I, <laughs> I, I'm the, I'm the same way. I have LeBron and AD at, at three. Okay. That's great. I want to put them higher. I just no. Let's just reveal our top three. At number okay. two, I have Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo. At number okay. one, I have Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. Nice. I have the exact same thing. I have Freak Time at two, and I have Jokic <laughs> and Murray at one. Respect it. Listen. I think that Jokic and Giannis and LeBron and AD could both be argued for being the number one duo. You just have to give Jokic and Murray that respect right now. They just did it. Doesn't look like their run's going to end anytime soon. There's no way you can't give them that credit. But I think any of these top three are all good enough to be number one. Kind of just comes down to who wins the chip that year. Yeah, bro. A hundred percent. Out of excitement, I put Freak Time at number one and then Jokic and Murray at number two. <laughs> yeah, I'm being disrespectful. This is me blatantly admitting it. Take it for what you want, bro. But this duo, I'm just imagine playing it, playing with them in 2K. I'm looking at, <laughs> I'm looking at the stats. I'm thinking about the pick and roll, the nasty blocks, the deep threes, and just how incredible this duo is. This is just me having fun in my imagination. This is day one of the trade, and so I had to put them at number one. Now. Bro, and you I realize, realize the Lakers. <laughs> LeBron and AD are not on this list. And for some reason, I was like, they were not in my LeBron for the most part was not in my mind whatsoever because old age and stuff like that. But if I were to probably redo my list, Fox and Sabonis will probably be out of here, knock them, knock them out. And I would probably section Braun and AD somewhere around the four and five range. Uh, so, wow. Yeah. You, I wouldn't. You I would take. Them. You would take you KD and Booker over list. LeBron and AD. I would take what? Would you take KD and Booker over LeBron and AD? Oh man, that's a lot of pondering to do that. I can't do in this fast segment that we're trying. <laughs> to do right now, I can't do that just yet. I can't do that. I, I respect do it. That. Don't lock yourself into a take you don't agree with. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not finna. I'm not finna put myself into that take yet. Though. I think at their <laughs> best, probably LeBron and AD, just because we've seen it work before. And like the chemistry is still there, 
but like Devin Booker's a demon, and I don't know how LeBron's gonna <laughs> play at this old age just yet. You know, so we'll so we'll see. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, I won't be shocked if year ends and Katie and Booker make a run. You got to nudge him up one spot, and I got to push LeBron eighty down to four. Wouldn't be the most surprising thing in the world, but if he- if LeBron's healthy, which at this point is a massive if, I think him and AD still have best duo in the league ceiling. So uh, th- three is like the lowest I can put them for now. I think three is very fair. Yeah, we'll yeah these are our list, man. I think they're pretty good. I think we'll see if we're crazy putting Giannis and Damian Lillard this high already. Spoiler alert: I don't think we will be. I think it'll be very fair, and I think they're probably in the year one when they hoist the championship trophy. I was just gonna say this upcoming NBA Finals is dream scenario in my mind. You never know what's gonna happen. That'll determine like who's probably the best duo. Obviously, there's other yeah. like, factors outside of that, but mainly this, honestly, is, this is what I'm waiting for. <laughs> the crazy thing is. I think the three championship favorites should be Bucks, Nuggets, Lakers in that order. So one of these three duos is gonna hoist it again, I think, and be that top duo. Makes sense. I like Orleans. that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, man. TikTok time. Let's do it. It's my favorite. Time, no need man. for pageantry. No need for transition. TikTok time. Straight to it. As always, we're gonna begin with the draft. This time, we're going to stick to the theme of the Milwaukee Bucks, and we're going to draft teams around Giannis. So that means we're all going to start with our power forward being Giannis and build from there, each of us picking four players around him. Need that. Need that. Unless you want to put Giannis at center or something, that's up to you. It doesn't yeah, got to be power forward. It's okay. Uh, who had first pick last time? What was the last draft we did? I think I got middle pick mm. last time. Yeah. yeah. Middle pick. Mm. Yeah. Last I had one third. we did was number 23. It was me, Mo, Donovan. So this time it's Mo, Donovan, me in the draft order. Yippee. So let's draft NBA lineups <laughs> around Giannis Antetokounmpo. Who, who we got first, Mo? Give me the better version of Dame, Steph Curry. Nasty Ooh, okay, go. Okay. Can't go wrong with that, bro. Yeah. All right. All right. That's fair. Well, listen, I know that he's kind of diet Steph, but I'm going to do what the Bucks just did. Give me Damian Lillard. Howard. I was hoping he fell to me at the turn. Can't be mad at you picking Dame. I'm going to go with, somehow he fell to me at three. Give me the best player in the NBA, Nikola Jokic. And then give me the best floor spacer I can imagine next to Giannis. Give me Kevin Durant. Mm. Mm. Uh, I was hoping your team is disgusting right now, bro. Length everywhere. <laughs> How are we stopping at? Donovan, you better you Prayer. better, you better do your thing right now. That's it. Right. <laughs> you need help from your Lord and Savior. <laughs> you know what? I don't want anybody scoring at the rim. Give me Anthony Davis. That's a good pick. Mm, that's a fantastic pick. I'll let that pick. All right. So, uh, so far, I have Steph and I got Giannis at my four. So, to fill in those gaps, I need someone big. Go ahead and give me Embiid or Big Harden. <laughs> and I don't then, love the fit of Embiid and Giannis, but I guess you can't. The spacing is OD. It doesn't fucking matter. I have Steph Curry, bro. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then um, at my three, give me Jason Tatum. Good pick. Good pick. Solid. That's good. That's good. I probably uh, should have went Tatum over KD, but the idea of KD and Giannis together is too tantalizing. I was really hoping. I was really hoping that, that Tatum fell to me. Hmm. Pick Jalen. Where, where do I? I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. You know what? At my <laughs> two, I want. I need some defense, but I don't really know. Who cares? Bruce Brown. Right at my there. two. No, at my two. Give me Devin Booker. Okay, that's nice. That's a great pick. Yeah. Listen, you got Giannis and AD to hold the defense down. I think you'll be fine with Booker. Yeah. I'm gonna win the draft right quick. At my two, give me Paul George, and at my one, give me Luka Doncic. That's what I was thinking. I was. I was Paul between. George I was between Luka Booker and Paul George. George. Damn. Damn. <laughs> my team is ridiculous they're all huge they're all great defensively besides Luca. it's over all right Donovan oh my god, god. <laughs> all right um let's do this all right at my three why is the well I guess he doesn't really fit um don't want to do this I'll go here at my three give me Kawhi Leonard bro you just stole <laughs> my pick go to hell oh my god bro why can't I have nothing it's like I'm cursed. <laughs> God. You've stolen a pick from me in each of the last two drafts. This is karma. I'm, I'm getting mom back. I just realized nobody has LeBron. <laughs> yeah. That's all I was I thinking know. about. But I was like, eh. 
<laughs> I'm good. Wow. Why did you just yap like that, Isaac? You just need to shut up. Okay. So go ahead and give me LeBron James. I'll move Tatum at my two and give me LeBron uh-huh. at my three. Straight up. Forces good team. everywhere. That's a great team. Yeah. That's so, nice. so my team is looking like Steph at the one, Tatum at the two, LeBron at the three, Giannis at the four, and Embiid at the five. Now, the spacing isn't perfect. Supreme three point shooters are Steph, of course, and then Tatum. But my defense is looking insane, and I just got big bodies everywhere. You gonna feel me? <laughs> you want to talk about big bodies? I got the absolute unit. Luka Doncic at point guard, posting up Steph, Peak too frat. small. <laughs> Paul George, better version of Tatum, big brother. Hell no. Nah. Kevin Durant, <laughs> not as good as Bron, but it's Kevin Durant, Giannis, and Jokic, and beats dad. All right. Well, listen, I have Dame. <laughs> I have Dame, I have Devin Booker, I have Kawhi at the three, I have Anthony Davis at the five. I'm happy. I think that I have the best defensive uh, front court with Kawhi, Giannis, and AD. You're really not <laughs> scoring. And then, listen, we're, y'all don't even have to guard or you won't get the opportunity to guard because Dame's pulling up from half court, knocking down threes. <laughs> Devin Booker's <laughs> running back and forth. I'm I'm going to be okay. You realize I have Jokic in the post with Giannis cutting and KD on the wing? You understand that I have you understand that I have Giannis guarding Giannis, so whatever you say <laughs> cancels out, doesn't mean anything. It's okay. Do you, remember what happened? Happened? Do you remember what happened last time we saw Anthony Davis trying to guard Jokic? Guess what? I'll the put white man Giannis made him meet his maker. I have I have a Giannis too. <laughs> and none I of that a, matter I because I have the greatest player of all time healthy alongside Joel and B Tatum and the light skin god Steph Curry. He's you 44. Whatever. Who's 44. You have Mike? Big Harden. You lost. <laughs> you got the worst player on the list. Fraud hey. VP. <laughs> uh, Can we trademark that? <laughs> I need that on a t shirt. So hold on. He's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what next thing we're going to do after this hilarious draft, we are going to stick to the topic of the Bucks. You know, they're the, they're the hottest topic of the day. We got to get plenty of TikToks done about them. So I'm going to name some NBA teams. You let me know if you'd pick them or the Bucks to win a series. First off, the Los Angeles Lakers. This is tough. Man. Bron Bron got to go. Goodbye, <laughs> Bron. <What>? Goodbye, Bron. <laughs> They are not. Like they are not beating the Bucks. Like old Yeller. <laughs> <laughs> they are not beating the Bucks. I don't know, man. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, bro. Le- are you scared of Rui Hachimura? Rui Hachimura, <laughs> Rui Hachimura don't move, don't move me what one, one bit at all, bro. Hell no. Nah. Well, Austin Reeves. So- <laughs> that moved me. <laughs> are you are you inspired by D'Angelo Russell shooting five hundred shots after every loss? Is no. that what moves you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, I'll go with the Bucks because I think they'll probably win the title. But I think the Lakers are like 1A, 1B with the Nuggets to make it out of the West. So it's close. I'm taking the Bucks. Yeah, I'm, ta- I'm taking the Bucks. I don't think that, that 1A, 1B, I'm not there with, with the Lakers right now as compared <laughs> to the Nuggets. They are not. They're, they're not beating the Bucks. If they have Dane, nah. I agree. Clean sweep. <laughs> what about the Phoenix Suns? Bucks in five. <laughs> yeah. I think the Bucks are gonna whoop their ass, bro. What is Yusuf Nurkic gonna do as soon as them boys Dame and Giannis put him in a pick and roll? He's gonna look lost. His other leg might start to tremble. I don't know what's gonna go on. <laughs> <laughs> He's wobbling, looking like happy feet. Yeah, but no, I, I get it. Everybody's in love with the Suns after they got the three star ball handlers. The, the The Bucks are gonna have just as good an offense and probably a top three defense. It's in a whole other stratosphere. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The score is going to be hella high, but just know that the Milwaukee Bucks will be higher because they know how to play defense. Yeah, Kevin Durant the, cannot the be your best defender having, on this on the court, bro. That's sad. Exactly. Having Giannis and Brooke Lopez together gives you such a high defensive floor. I think this team is in a league of their own compared to the Suns. It's Listen, unless better. Devin Booker shoots 85% from the field again, the Suns aren't doing anything crazy this year. It might <laughs> need to be 90, bro. <laughs> What about the Boston Celtics? Oh, man. Five. Give me <laughs> Milwaukee in five. They are, <laughs> listen, they don't have a point guard. Nobody can go to the left. Nobody can dribble. They have a whole bunch of guys who can get buckets, but guess what? It doesn't matter because, again, I think finally the Bucks have a team that can just get over whatever mental help that, that Boston has on them. You yeah. know, I agree. I feel bad for Celtics fans because it seemed like it was their year to win the East. 
and then they went and got Dame, and now I think the Celtics have no chance. Yeah, the Celtics went ahead, or the the Bucks went ahead and did a move that moves mountains. Meanwhile, the the Celtics just went ahead and added Kristaps Porzingis, which is good, but he ain't good enough, and he's not solving the deep rooted issues that the Celtics have. The the yeah that that move the, that move moves yeah. ant hills. Yeah, <laughs> facts, bro. <laughs> <laughs> ant hills is hilarious. And lastly, the Denver Nuggets. This is I, what, what do you, what the do you battle. Think my of, is? The battle of all battles. This is. I think you're going Army with the Nuggets. Game. I'm going Milwaukee in five. Uh, okay. <laughs> These dudes are going to be disgusted. Obviously, listen. I'm just saying that they're, they're not going to yeah. beat them in five, but they are going to win. They are. They yeah. are. They are going to win. I think that they are going to be as if everybody's healthy. They are going to be as unstoppable as we've seen in a in a while. Like these guys are are different. You yeah, know. I am the most confident picking them to win the finals than I have been since the Prime Warriors with KD. I think this team is going to be clearly the best team in the league. Like I said, comes down to can they stay healthy? Do they get unlucky or not? Yeah, although Jamal Murray is the greatest playoff riser of all time, he's not no Damian Lillard. I don't want to say stratospheres, <laughs> bro, but they're in completely different tiers. And it's just no, all levels. about Jokic and Giannis, who's better. And this is an honest debate that people should have at at the start of the season. Yeah. I think the biggest obstacle in the I think the biggest obstacle in the Bucks way is Giannis's knees. Full respect to the best player alive on the other side, I think Dame and Giannis is too strong of a combination to surpass. Yeah, exactly. 100%. <laughs> it's great. That's a good TikTok. Got that one over with. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to run back something we did about a month ago, which was hilarious. We're going to look at some baby pictures or childhood pictures, some of them, and guess which NBA player this is. Oh, I am terrible at this. <laughs> I never know whose child this is. I saw him by your bad. side. Let's lock in. These Please. are great. Listen, yeah, this you're is usually back. Mo hosts Scoliosis, this. you will be carrying. <laughs> usually Mo hosts this, so interested to see his first time guessing these babies, if he can have some strength in this. You see the way I guess hairlines, foreheads, and all that, bro? I don't know what it is, but I just know. <laughs> this, your bag. this is your bag. Yeah. This is oh, yeah. your bag. So, guess the NBA player based on their baby pictures. First off, who is this child? Man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who this is. This was not that hard. You can see it in the eyes. I see it in the eyes. The nose I'm is kind of flat. With this child. I don't this know is giving this is. me DeAndre Ayton vibes. This is not DeAndre Ayton. Now the Damn. picture's a little bit it's, it's a little bit too grainy to be DeAndre Ayton. It's a little 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> is, is he current? No, he's not playing anymore. Oh, he ain't playing anymore. Okay, that threw me in for a loop, bro. Now we might be cooked. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> he ain't playing anymore. Not playing anymore. Is this Chauncey Billups? No. It's not a terrible guess, I guess, but no, it's not Chauncey Billups. Okay. I he, need a hint, please. He's above 6'9. Oh, he's above 6'9. Big old dude. Oh, oh this Big has dude. this might be Chris Bosch. This is Chris Bosch. Ah, man, that extendo neck, that extendo neck had an insane growth spurt. <laughs> Holy shit. He's <laughs> hiding. Yeah. Now look yeah, at the smile. You can tiny. see it 100%. Yeah, the smile was, right, was next one. for me. Thank you, Mo. Next one, who is this child? Oh my god, he looks like a menace already looking at me oh, in my no, eyes. I he needs to scream at well, other no, babies already. This is Russell Westbrook. Nah. What? No, this baby, looks like head buzz people. this baby looks like he headbutts people. Yes, this is Russell Westbrook. I knew it. That Menace from only day one. one. We've done this video three times. That's the only one I'm confident in. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> That's the only one I felt like I knew. <laughs> nah, he grew into that skull. That shit was bulging. Yeah, no, his bro. forehead is protruding. I know he I know he headbutted so many kids in them playground days, bro. Easily. <laughs> yeah, <you're thinking. laughs> Next player. Who is this child? Is that Lowry marketing? <laughs> no, it is not Lowry marketing. It's not a bad it's not guess. It's not a bad guess, though, with the hair. Is this Franz Wagner? No, this is not Franz Wagner. Ah, is it his brother, hmm. Mo Wagner? Probably not. Why the fuck would you no, put Mo Wagner in a video? <laughs> <laughs> Should have guessed every European white. Yeah, white, no white, 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 white. <laughs> Run down Dirk? the list. <laughs> is this Dirk? Luca? No, it's not Dirk. Steve Blake? Steve Dash? <laughs> <laughs> he going down the list for real. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Is this Walker Kessler? No, no. No Walker? 
Damn, Kessler. <laughs> Larry Bird. Walker got Kevin McHale. This is not Walker Kessler. <sighs> Who's another white guy? <laughs> Bill Lambeer. <laughs> Are they current? <laughs> yes, they're still playing. Oh, man. Is that a Lakers shirt that he has on? This is tough. No, it's Lakers colors, but it's just a basketball shirt. I don't. I can't tell exactly what it is. Could this be Kevin Love? What the? This is Kevin Love. Wow, wow. bro. I ain't gonna you lie. Landed on the right white. Yeah, oh, I ain't gonna lie. I was weird, running man. out of amount of white. I was running out of the amount of white players. I could count on my head, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no more white players to name. <laughs> Shout out to Kevin. Their hair be changing colors. I don't know who this is. Facts. Him being blonde as a kid throws it off. Yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> All right, next one. Who is this kid? Oh, I don't know who this is. Oh. RB. Donovan, who is this? I ah, uh, I know who it is. I'm blanking. Well, Please tell me this is. Just no, I can't even. Old man even vibes all the time. I don't know why. Bro, I know who this is, though. Like, I just don't know his name. It feels like he's Picture been like old Supreme forever. Napoleon down in my vibes. Is this <laughs> Chauncey Billups? You tell me. I'm going to guess that. This is Chauncey Billups. Boom! This is not Chauncey Billups. Oh, shit. Who the hell is this? I was way off. I'm playing. This is Chauncey Billups. Okay, <laughs> there we go, bro. I was going to say. Don't, listen, don't play with me like that. I have very limited <laughs> success in this game. I need everything that I need that I can I get. I was going to pull some deep pulls. Please. I was going to say, is that Rodney Hood on my screen? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney? Alec Burks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, next up, who is this child? Mouth wide open like that, he was enjoying that ice cream. Who is this boy? <laughs> 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 he was too happy at this day, bro. Damn. Yeah, he was hype. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's strawberry. Uh, looks like he was lit. <laughs> this is an old picture. So he's not playing anymore, right? He's not. Oh, he's not playing anymore, Donovan. This old whites, weird. go. <laughs> Old whites. <laughs> I'm gonna just name the list: Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Steve Blake, <laughs> um, Steve Nash. You know Steve Blake in there? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Steve Blake was a menace, bro. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, Could no him. I have no idea though. Old whites. Uh, Old whites. Can you tell me the era of white? <laughs> we played in the 2000s. Uh, I was gonna okay, say okay. Jason Williams, but this can't be him. Down. Could this be him? Not Jason Williams. Oh, okay, dang. I thought. Okay, dang, okay. I kind of thought. I kind of <laughs> thought for a second in the mid, or not the mid two thousands. We're just going two thousands. Um, bro, who are the white guys for that time? Come on, I am at a loss right now. I'm tapping out. <laughs> Did you guys give up that fast? I'm tapping bro, out. I don't know. Listen, this I child already, is pal us all. I should have known listen, this. They be they change hair color, man. Yeah. I don't know. They're a different child. They're they be fucking doing that. Shape their shifters, eyes bro. Their hair we can't change. tell. They don't look anything alike. Uh, <laughs> Damn, that's funny. This is power. Right, we should have known. Who is this child? Does this say Fulton County? That's an Atlanta baby right there. <laughs> Why does this Loki look like Rondo? <laughs> the long head. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay this child is this Rajon gonna, Rondo I ain't gonna lie this looks like no, one of not Rajon Rondo it looks like one of Shaq's kids to be honest bro <laughs> <laughs> listen uh, I don't know. damn this is Fulham County so this is that's some, not a bad thing you just said I won't tell you why is this a player son maybe hmm this is KCP hmm. No, this is not oh, KCP. <laughs> he was, I told you Shaq's son isn't a terrible guess, and you were KCP. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about the, the, the Georgia babies, bro. So Shaq's son's not a terrible guess. So it has to be someone who's related to Shaq's in son. Some way. It's not Shaq's son, but when you when, when you hear the name, you're like, oh. Yeah, it's someone's son. Potentially. I, okay, whatever. <laughs> no, but okay. but I can't give you ambiguous hints. I'll take it the wrong way. <laughs> Maybe maybe his last name is like O'Neal or something. <laughs> is this Jermaine? Is this Jermaine O'Neal? This is not Jermaine O'Neal. He is not in the O'Neal lineage. <laughs> I'm gonna hate myself, bro, for this. This dude just looks like so stale face. Has no emotion. 
He looked like he just won a championship, so he can't even smile or anything like that. He's doing shot put, <laughs> strong ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, strong ass. Okay, hold on. Hmm. I give so up. He Fuck. was saying about this child. Yeah, we got to tap out. This I kid give was up. pushing weight in middle school. I give up, bro. Tap out. This is Dwight Howard. I was just about to say this is Dwight. Ah, mm. uh, yeah, yeah. I should have said Dwight. Y'all should have got it. this one. I'm disappointed. Damn, bro. I'm folding. Holy <laughs> shit. I'm out of my element. Last one. What? Who is oh, this player? Me. Is that Tim Duncan? I was about to say the <laughs> same thing. <laughs> Instant guess. Yes, that's Tim Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> he looks so awkward. Damn. You finally got one. <laughs> Off guard ass picture. Looked like this picture was not supposed to be taken. Who took this? <laughs> uh, why is he posing like a Hollister model? What is he trying to prove? Oh, my goodness, bro. All the medals on his neck. Shout out to him, though. <laughs> was he a swimmer? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. All right, that's the end of that TikTok. Next thing we got, we're gonna do another draft. This okay. time we're gonna draft a player instead of a team. It's gonna be build a player. So let's build the perfect NBA player with no All Star skills. First pick, easiest pick in the world. Give me Jamal Murray shooting. He hasn't been okay. an All Star bastard. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be soon, but for now I got him. Yeah. All right, that's that's cool. You know what? Give me. Give me Cade Cunningham's body. Wow. Mm, okay. Got a good size. I like that. Okay. Get a cool. good build. This is an easy pick. Um, go ahead and give me Jalen Brunson finishing. Fini- fini- That's what I was going to do one. if I didn't pick Jamal Murray. Hitting shooting. y'all ass with drop steps, and I'm el- I'm <laughs> putting shoulders into you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Straight bully ball. I love it. Facts. And then for defense, go ahead and give me the defensive player. The Actually... Go ahead and give me Drew Holiday. <laughs> Drew Holiday's uh, been an all-star. So. Oh, fuck. Give, give me the defensive player of the year then. Marcus Smart. There you go. See, okay. I said Drew Holiday for the sake of the TikTok. Buzzwords, whatever. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's fine. That's fine. All right. So for for passing, give me Ricky Rubio passing. That's a great uh, pick. I was going to do that. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Mmm. Ooh, give me Markel Fultz finishing. Okay, <sighs> underrated. Facts. And then defensively, give me Derek White. First team all defense. That's he, good. That's he's good. so annoying on defense, bro. Damn. All right, let's see. I have Cade's body, Ricky Rubio's passing. Give me, you know, give me Seth Curry's shooting. That's mm. a great pick. That's elite. That's elite. That might be the steal of the draft, low key. Okay. Isaac, did you get Josh Giddy? Nope. Oh, nice. Give me Josh Giddy passing. I'm going to take that. And that was the real steal of the draft. <laughs> All right. You're going to have it. Oh, yeah. Trust me. I'm taking that shit. So I got Josh okay, Giddy shooting or Josh Giddy passing. My bad. And then I should prioritize shooting right now. Go ahead and give me Jordan Poole, the second coming of Steph. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, for my finishing, let's see. Okay, cool. All I need is finishing and defense, and you guys already have it, so I can give my guys. So for finishing, give me Dennis Smith Jr. <laughs> okay. nice. I'm, dun- I'm, dunking, I'm dunking on everybody. <laughs> that's hilarious. So jump real high, and that's about it. <laughs> almost, almost dunking. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> you'll get up the there. Mo- I'm gonna have the most almost highlights in the league. Facts. <laughs> I don't know if the ball's going in the hoop, but you'll be in the air. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my turn. Give me, like a lot of ways. Give me soon to be one of the best athletes in the NBA, a men Thompson's body. Ah, he is an insane athlete, bro. That's, fire. That's great. People, That's people, fire. Don't people don't know yet, but they're gonna find out he is a fucking freak. That's yeah. fire. He doesn't make sense. And then passing, bro. give me one of the best bench game managers in the league. Give me Tyus Jones. He was on my that list. That was a too. very solid pick. He was That's on my list pick. as well. He was on my list. Nice. All right. All right. So for defense, let me finish this off with off night himself. Give me Davion Mitchell's defense. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love that shit. You know ball. All right. But sadly, <laughs> I'm going to have to one up you. Go ahead for body. Give me Jalen Hutchfino. He is huge. Big body okay. guard. Yeah, and he also he's very athletic, so this is very solid. He's like what six four, six five. I'm I'm how much you weigh? How much you weigh? He's heavy set dude. He's probably no he he's a heavy set dude. He's 
He's solid. Okay, I, mean, I guess. I personally would have went Scoot Henderson, Jay Nivey. You know, maybe I'm Dyson thinking Daniels about the height, bro. Time. Fuck that. I'm thinking about the height. You're not thinking like me. Dyson Daniels is 6'7". <laughs> Dyson Daniels is 6'7", but he doesn't move like Jalen Hutchins. You know? He doesn't have the... Could have been yours. Yeah. Aura. He doesn't the have the Lakers tattoos. Have Hitch, you know. Yeah, he don't have the tattoos. Nah, Think about that too, bro. I forgot the Lakers got him. He's going to be a steal. He's going to be nice. I watched hey, him man, play. So I got my player, body I got, Amen Thompson, best body here, pause. Defense, Derek White. Listen, the only one who was first team last year. Passing, Tyus Jones. That got me there. Shooting, Jamal Murray, easy dub. Finishing, Markel Fultz, easy dub. Yes. And my, you got Brunson. Fuck. All right, cool. <laughs> I have, for, for body, I have Kate Cunningham. Nice. For defense, Davion Mitchell. Passing, Ricky Rubio. Shooting, Seth Curry. And then for finishing, Dennis Smith Jr. So I can at least jump real high. Dennis That's Smith, nice. low-key, should have got picked for his defense. His yeah, defense he was he, incredible last year. He was a menace was for the good. Nets, bro. I agree. So for body, I got 6'6", 215, point guard, Jalen Hood, <laughs> Fino. Y'all are sleeping uh, on him. Like, finishing... Like, uh, finishing, I got Jalen Brunson. You guys will literally go into cardiac arrest as soon as I'm on the court with you. <laughs> uh, passing, Josh Giddy. You guys will know what's coming. The hair and also the no looks. Y'all are insane. <laughs> Shooting, Jordan Poole. Come on now. You already know what the vibes are. And then defense, I got Marcus Smart. Okay, that's a good thing. I, I, don't, I don't know who won this one. This one's pretty even. Just say me. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Jamal, I mean, so we have Jamal Murray and Brunson. We have all-stars that aren't yeah. all-stars, so that helps. Yeah. Marcus Smart but, went ahead and won a defensive player of the year. So, I mean, you can also put yeah, a up better, there. Though. Fraudulent. <laughs> I got the best athlete here, which I think makes a big difference. But I don't have the best passer. I got the worst passer. So, I don't know. This is, this is a very balanced one. I like the this. I like this. This is yeah, good. we'll see. All right, one more video before we get out of here. Listen, the Damian Lillard trade just happened. James Harden's got to be next. We're going to do a quick video talking about where we want James Harden to be traded. Let's get it out there. Let's get a, let's get a TikTok on the, on the interwebs before it happens. See if we predict it right. So, which team do y'all want to see James Harden traded to? Ah, oh, man. I ain't going to lie. I kind of want to see him on the New Orleans Pelicans. They have all these oh. picks. You can only give them a <laughs> I few. <don't. laughs> I understand. Wow. It's not beautiful, but it's interesting. Okay. Okay. I do not want to see him with Zion Williamson. That sounds gross. Heavy set. I but understand that. I see where that. you're coming from. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to pick the easy answer. I want to see him on the Clippers. I want him to get Ew. what he wants. Listen, Boo. if it works, if they're healthy, it'll be glorious. If it doesn't work, it'll be fucking hilarious. They'll have three guys that are... That are Liable to sell you at any moment. It could be peak comedy if it goes wrong. For content purposes, I agree. However, that's <laughs> not... I just don't want to see it. You already know why. We don't really rock with them. I don't want success for the Clippers. Listen, maybe you could say James Harden is a playoff time bomb. Maybe you're sabotaging the team you hate. <laughs> wow. Uh, you're on to something. You're cooking. You're cooking. <laughs> we might have to get that going. We might We might have to do that. Um, what, what would I want? Low key... I kind of want to see James Harden in Minnesota. I was, I would, that. I'm kind of intrigued about the idea of, of having Anthony Edwards with somebody that can like legitimately facilitate. And listen, yeah. if to, to do all that cat will get out of there. And I think that a Harden Rudy Gobert pick a roll be kind of nasty. Yeah. I like that. I, low key. Listen, last second, the bulls were linked to Damian Lillard was never going to happen. But, you know, they're linked because they need a point guard. I kind of see the vision with him being the point guard there. This is such a Bulls thing to do. This is the perfect mid it. that they need to carry on it. their yeah, tradition yeah, over the move. last five to ten years of being mid. Bulls, I need them to lock it in. For sure. They're going mid on mid. But I think he would make them better. Like, he, they need that playmaker. And if he continues to take a backseat as a scorer, listen, maybe he doesn't want to. But if he's playmaker first, I think he fits with DeMar and Levine a little bit. Oh, honestly, I have an even okay. better fit if you're thinking playmaker first. I need to see him on the Orlando Magic. I don't think it will happen because the assets don't really make sense. <laughs> He'd hate but that. He'd be pissed. Him, yeah, he would be sick to he would be sick to his stomach, but for all the wrong reasons, bro. Hey, listen, the Orlando Magic, they're on the come up. Send Marco Fultz back to the Philadelphia 76ers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Amend those wounds, bro. He knows how to shoot. He knows how to drive and all that, bro. But him setting up Paulo Bencaro, has he has Franz Wagner by his side, Anthony Black. 
get him out of here. He's cool and you all know that, what? but you know what I mean? He would him. hate that, but listen, they'd let him drop 30 and 10 every night. Maybe he would just eat and be fine with it. Not even 30 and 10. If he went, to, if he if he had the 30 and 10 mindset, bro, uh, never mind then. Fuck this trade. <laughs> <laughs> listen, low key, let's get Harden out the country. Let's send him to, to, to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> banish him. Let's banish Toronto. Oh. Listen, we can we can deport James Harden the same way Kawhi Leonard did. <laughs> Donovan is cooking Toronto. right now. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. But but honestly, bro, uh Pascal Siakam and James Harden led team would be continuing the mid that Masai Ujiri has wanted over the last few years. And honestly, <laughs> like it's great. If I had to watch James Harden, Scotty Barnes, OG, Pascal, and Jacopo ah, play, I'm going to so throw nasty. up. <laughs> that's so nasty. That's horrible. Honestly, they'll be like a solid seventh seed in the in the Eastern Conference, which is solid. Listen, what about the Heat? Now that do you, do you, do you think the, the, the Heat need a point guard? Did you see that happening? That'll be the no. fastest way to end James Harden's career. You're putting him in Miami <laughs> around BBLs and a bunch of nightclubs, bro? Are you crazy? <laughs> Are you mad? Can't do it. Can't no. go out like Iverson be washed Can't at 29. <laughs> oh, no. Nah, he ain't doing it, bro. But, uh, I forgot. James Harden's like 33. He passed 29. <laughs> Listen, yeah, look, bro. now that Kyrie's gone, send him back to Brooklyn because they have a whole bunch of forwards, no point guards. Have him and Mikael Bridges. <laughs> I think he's burned that bridge. I think that's cooked. <laughs> hey, if it send wasn't him back. Be just, eating. just for laughs. Joe Sai wants nothing to do with any of those motherfuckers that he shipped out. <laughs> if he comes back, Joe Sai will, he'll, he'll lose years of his life due to stress. Listen, <laughs> everybody deserves a second chance. <laughs> not, not James Harden, Brooklyn. <laughs> yes, Joe Sai, he deserves less than zero chances. <laughs> Joe Sai might want harm than a James Harden. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh man. That was great. Yeah, man. That's the end of that segment. And that's the end of the podcast. If people oh, are still here, goodness. what should they comment? Daryl Morey is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl Morey is a liar. Yeah. <laughs> Just spam that in the comments. Comment Daryl Morey is a liar, and I want that PS5. And if yes. you really want it, follow us on Twitter, and you can maybe have it. Exactly, bro. We win There's on y'all. There's a one in 10,000 chance you'll be able to have it, this and is that's better odds game. than you have now. This is a free game. All you have to do is hit a follow button on Twitter. Facts. Easiest come up in the world. That's a generational fumble if you're not doing it already. Audio listeners. True. People on YouTube, do your fucking thing and collect your PS5. Let's do it. Yep. And that's it. Episode's over. For y'all are still here to the very end, TD3 live streams coming soon.